Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Contineros podcast. The podcast is sponsored by Port Pro, the leading operating system for drayage carriers. Schedule a free demo today at portpro.io. And don't forget to mention Contineros for 10% off. Today in the studio, I have uh, Cesar Avalos. He's a owner operator from the that operates out of the LA and LB ports. What's up, Caesar? Thanks for coming. Uh, no problem. Tell us a little about yourself. I've uh, been a truck driver here in the ports, maybe what since 2008, 2009, around there. Uh, never left. Always been here, either moving uh, Lambridge or door delivery. Mm-hmm. Lambridge is your thing. It was my thing. Now it's trying to evolve to door. Yeah. Uh, usually the train's taking most of the Lambridge. It's everybody always said, oh, the train's going to take all the Lambridge. And in some terminals, yes. And, you know, there's still Lambridge out there. It's just, you know, it's kind of evolved. A couple of days ago, I, I saw they released the article that there's this rail project that will take like 750 trucks off the road or something like that. But then... Someone told me, well, that I respect a lot. It said that I don't believe everything you read in the paper. But what do you think? Have you heard of that? Well, remember when we first started, and they had been telling people since, like, what, the 80s, oh, the train's going to take everything. Okay, well, container ships were a different size back then. Now look at these massive ships coming in. You think the train can take all of them? They said that uh, when Pier E was built, they can take, what, uh, Two, two trains to take the whole ship. Now they have three ships there now. So. Even at Hanjin, like a couple of days ago, I saw they had three. And I, I, I never used to pay attention to that, like how many ships were on the side. And until this backlog thing happened and then started paying more attention to ships and where well, they are. This wasn't the first time this got backlogged. Remember when they went on strike and then there was a bunch of ships out in the ocean as well? So it's not the first time this happened before. Oh, yeah, but that, that time it was during, like, the contract time. Yeah. I was getting, like, 600 bucks to go <laughs> right here down the street. Like, it's like literally that, less than 10 miles. It's like that right now, too. Some mm. some companies take advantage. Yeah. Uh, if you have a stable customer, you can't do that because then you just shoot yourself in the foot because, you know, eventually everything's going to slow down. There's always an up and there's always a down. So the people that don't take advantage of their customers will still have the steady work. When there's nothing and then you've been there when there was one container for like 15 guys and the guy that paid the most was the one that <laughs> got the container so it is what it is mm. you think they'll give that loyalty back then so they remember like when customers remember just how we remember when you know companies like do us dirty the like, favoritism gonna, shit not only that like i mean you remember when we moved that load to vegas and how long it takes for us to get paid? Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was horrible. That was not cool. And and the, the worst part is that I think they knew already that that would be the case. But you know, I still run into that guy. Yeah. And he was like, "Hey, I got a lot of work. I got a lot uh, of work." Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, I do, but you don't pay. What's the point?" Yeah. <laughs> oh, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. I go, dude, you're you're like LinkedIn, so that gives him a bad name. So, I mean, if he would offer you work, I mean, would you do it? I wouldn't do it again. I'd be like, no, I learned my lesson. Yeah. So sometimes when they throw these crazy rates out there, I'd be like, okay, you know, that's a good rate, but what if you don't get paid? You know, you're out there chasing people for your money. And it's yeah, um, on um, one of the last episodes, an owner op, Jose Morelos, he mentioned <coughs> the importance of checking their credit. Like, that, that, that helps you too, like, sometimes, you know? Well, you think if we would have checked their credit, it would have helped? Like, if we really did our homework? Or if I did my homework before offering the work? Well, no, because you go on on good faith, and I mean, you've worked with them before. Like yeah. it's yeah, it's it wasn't like a character flaw. It's just that I think they bit off a little bit more than they can chew, and they thought they were gonna get paid a certain time, but then they got overwhelmed with how many containers they were doing, and then how much was going out. And you know, usually these people pay in what thirty days. I know Lambridge, uh, they got paid every six months, so you know, a regular yeah. small and pop company can't really survive like that it sucks being in the middle because i 
luckily, like, all the guys were respectful, but like, I could still feel the pressure, you know, like, hey, so what's up? Like, I need to get paid. And it's like, man, like, I literally wish that I had the money so I can pay them and worry about it when I get paid. You know what I mean? But anytime I think you give work, you should already be under the impression that you need to pay them ASAP. It's not the driver's problem if you didn't get paid. Like, the driver already did his part of the deal. And if you're not getting paid, like, why is that their problem? Well, as owner ops and drivers, they get paid weekly. Some of them bi-weekly. Uh, some brokers get paid, like I said, every three months, six months. It depends. It's on their arrangement. But if they barely just started doing it, maybe they were just employees before and they wanted to venture out by themselves. They didn't understand that part. So you working with them, like saying, oh, I know this guy. This guy's cool. You know what I mean? So then you go and you put your faith in them and then, oh, man, like something's happening with the pay. Like, we got paid. Yeah, here's your check, but it bounced. How many times did your check bounce? I don't recall, but it was, it was just not a good experience, man. So yeah. I went, I just went over there and I go, look, this is what's going on. I need I need my, my check to clear. You know, I get paid weekly. You know, I took time from where we were working at before. We did this little trip. You know, I did my end. So, you know, you need to pay. Okay, okay. You go cash your check this day. But don't tell anybody else. I go, well, that's kind of shady, you know, <laughs> but. But you cashed it. But I did <laughs> cash it. And after I cashed it, I go, hey, my check cleared. <laughs> the Lord was watching, Caesar. You didn't come and get us. Hey, guys, this is my strategy. I had to try it first. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, I told you, go go tell him. I went over there and I bugged her. You know, I finished my, my work. And then afterward, I would drive by and be like, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? And they would be, be hiding. And it was just, uh, it was just a mess. Man. But I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson, like saying, okay, I'm going to be getting work from different people that I don't know and taking the risk. Like, yeah, you know, this guy pays a lot more, but do I really want to be chasing this person I don't really know? And then, like. You know, what really pisses me off is when you feel used, like the, all this, the sweet talk, kind of like um, the sweet talk to get you to do it. And then after that, like they ghost on you, like now you don't need me, so. You'll pay me when you pay me. Okay, cool. Next time, then you know what it is, you know? Yeah, but I've heard guys that that do a bunch of work and they just stack it up and they're expecting this like five, six thousand dollar paycheck and then all of a sudden they go to collect like a month later and they can't find them. The address they give them, they're not there anymore. And then you're like, hey, well, what the hell? You owe me this money. I'm like, hey. That's why I like to work with people that I know and I know my check's going to be there no matter what. Yeah, it might be a little bit less, but not too much. It's still fair, but I know my check's not going to bounce. I know that, you know, everything's still up in the, on the up and up. Yeah. Well, you live and learn now. Uh, at least you were lucky because some people don't get paid at all. I had a friend, uh, he went out of business. He, mm -hmm. he and he started his own authority before this was a thing because of the fear of AB5 and all this stuff. Like, this was just him trying to literally start his business. He had a customer. It was the, the what they owed him was racking up. He got to 10. I think he got up to like 20K and, and the guy never paid him. He had to go out of business, you know? Certain things like that, like. If you go up to a 10,000... You got to know a limit, huh? Hey, this is enough. No. If yes. I get to five and you don't pay me, hey, don't then ask me to move Then you pull a more. container and you, and you hold it basically hostage. You're like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to put a lien on this container until you pay me. And then the customers start asking for that container. And then they put pressure on them to start scrambling. I go, hey, I'm going to charge you storage fees. I'm going to charge you this. I'm going to charge you that. And then it is what it is till you pay me. So it clears and we resume business. I hate to do it this way, but that's the way business works because that's what they they would do. You think so? Like a lot of us, like I don't even know if that's legal. Like, how would I do that? Like, yeah, hold the container hostage. You could because you're waiting you gotta for send payment. them some kind of email, like yes. stating what you're doing, so it's yeah. not like oh he stole my well, container. This is the reason I'm holding it. Yeah. So you, we we had a an instance where we did a a move, and um, we did two moves, and they didn't pay. They came back the third time, and then we researched, and then they go, hey, this guy again. Okay, so. We got there, we loaded the container, and before we put it in the port, we were waiting for an appointment. We said, hey, guess what? Uh, you owe me for two back containers, and then I need to get paid for this container as well before we engage it. Because you owe me, it's been over six months, and this needs to clear before I, I, I engage your container. So now they're worried about the container rolling and extra charges, but it's justified because they owe you money for a service you didn't perform. So, What does rolling mean? Um, 
think of uh, booking numbers as like airplane tickets. So oh, everything in the thing. container okay. has yeah. a ticket, right? So this spot is reserved for this container. So if that container doesn't make it, they have to pull in and put something else in there. And they schedule it for the next vessel. So that's like rolling the booking and stuff. So now the, there's fees that they could incur from waiting for the next vessel. It's not yeah. like the next vessel is well, there the next day. Well, right? remember, the container has a per diem. It has to be out of the it, – it, it, it goes into, the, I guess, the – what do you call it? The, the public. You go deliver it. You have certain days before it gets back before they start charging. There's that. There's per diem. Per diem is outside of the port. Yeah. It's not in their, ter- in their, yeah. their possession. The merge is inside – Right? No, you can still get the merge on a container that's been out. So you get, I think, uh-huh. sometimes they give you like five days. Yeah. After five days, they start charging you. Like, hey, man, I need this entity because I can use it for something else. So then they start charging. So then they have to pay for the chassis daily. That adds. And then you got to pay for storage of the container because nobody parks a container for free. You can't park on the street and then get towed. Or somebody will steal it. You park them for free if the steamship line doesn't want to receive them, though. Uh no, it's not a lot free. of people. A lot of people don't know how to build that. They're like, I've had this fucking can in my yard for like no, three weeks. Char- you charge storage. You charge. Star- you have to charge. The you chassis. can charge the steamship line storage. Not the steamship. You charge the customer. Everything. Not, the steamship line oh. does not hit. Take any of the hits. They should though. What do you think? No. Well, because the, the, okay. Once we we do our part, we take it out. We take it to the customer. We bring it back. There's a the reason we can't bring it back. Like. Why is that our problem now? Why do I have to store it? It's not you. It's the customer because they decided to build with this shipping line. And they decided because you didn't tell them, hey, pick this line. Oh. So they pick the shipping line. They pick every, all the arrangements. And all the service that comes with that? Yes. That's the consequence of your yes. choice. It's a lot of stuff to learn. It's a lot of stuff. I learn little by little. Like, I pay attention. Like, I'm always watching what's going on. What's uh-huh. What's this? Why this? And why that? And what's the reason behind it? I think a lot of us just see like the face value, like literally like we just see a container stacked up, go get it. And that's, you know, like load in, load out. But yeah. this is like a big ass web, bro. Like yes. literally uh, th- this this girl uh, uh, on the last podcast, Sadea, shout out to her. She came all the way from Jersey for episode eight. <laughs> Budweiser, empty Budweiser aluminum cans in a container without the tops uh, shipped. Uh, imported from India, mm-hmm. you know. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So a lot of moving parts. The more we know, I think the more well prepared we can be to succeed in that. You know. No. Okay. Um, hazmat. <laughs> yeah. You're a hazmat driver. You yeah. you stayed a hazmat driver. I I became a hazmat driver though once. Yeah. Record two days, three days. <laughs> <laughs> Did you move one hazmat load? I think you did, right? Just I don't one? think so, bro. I think you did one. Nah. Out of NYK, we're doing Lambridge. I think you did one. From yeah. 20 foot to Santa Fe, I think. Yeah, because you're yeah. like, what about the placards and all that? Yeah. Hey, speaking to the X, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Imaginary X. X, X, X. Your neck. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to finish that sentence. <laughs> but uh, so hazmat, dude. I was so excited. We literally went to some classes. Yeah. Uh, I passed the test. Yeah. I'm a hazmat driver. Mm-hmm. I did, obviously, I did it because I wanted more money. Yeah. And I was excited about it. And then I got this letter that I had three points on my license. No, you got a right? ticket. You got a ticket uh, right before. You had uh-huh. two points. You're like, ah, I'm excited. I'm excited. You got a ticket for speeding, I think. Oh. And you were like, ah, what do you think, bro? And I go, they're going to spend your license if they catch that point. So yeah. before it did it, you're like, you know what? I'm going to go take it off. And it was one of those things like, you can't fire me because I quit. Right? <laughs> so I, I, I had to, you can't take yeah. my license because yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reduce it yeah. to a, a regular CDL. Yeah. How's that? Because no. otherwise they would have suspended it yeah. completely. Right? Mm-hmm. But if I'm not a hazmat. Uh, if you're not a hazmat, then I think it's like six. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. Even points are more 1.5, right? Or more. Are they more now? In for hazmat, I don't, I don't really get tickets like that anymore. But you're not aware of like. No, I'm not aware. I, I, like I mean, everything I get, I put a lawyer on it just because of the license. I, I can get three points. Mm. Like I try to be a good citizen and stuff and not speed and stuff, but sometimes you Law just kind of get under. Yeah, there you go. Law abiding citizen. Yeah, you get used to it. I mean, it's it's tough, but you know some cops are are you know, son conscientes. You know what I mean. 
they know that, hey, this is your license, you're a hazmat driver, you're considered a professional. So they give you breaks and stuff, and I'm grateful for the, you know, I've gotten a couple of breaks. I've gotten pulled over, and they've told me, hey, man, you're a hazmat you know, driver, what are you doing? He goes, ah, you know, it's late. You know, you just tell them, just be straight up with them. I'm going to give you a warning, bro, just keep it down, you know, whatever. It's happened. I I forget the company, but I, I think I moved a couple hazmat loads, and then I brought it to their attention. Like, they wouldn't. It's illegal, right, to move them? Uh, I remember. I remember. How uh, did that go? You were coming out of ITS. Yeah, I, yeah. I asked you because you, yeah. you're my hazmat contact. <laughs> I'm like, what's up? No, yeah, I told you, no, those, those you have to be paid hazmat. And then um, there's gray area. So I think for class nine, you don't need a hazmat if it's domestic. So from, like, Cali to Utah, whatever, I, I think you're not supposed to. You, you sh- it's not required. I think it's limited quantities or class. I think it's limited quantities. Mm-hmm. But class nine, some people get confused with class nine and limited quantities. Not the same thing. Because so. there's some that are hazmat when they're on on the sea on, on the water, and as soon as they touch, no, they're not. And no. you gotta take those placards off. No, no. no. There's nothing like that. No. <laughs> marine pollutant. Marine pollutant is marine pollutant. It doesn't matter. But if I'm on the highway, well, there's on no the highway, you don't you don't need. Okay, so all containers are international. You know, mm-hmm. so. You need to have the placards on. Until they transload it, then the marine pollutant becomes obsolete. Oh, so you can't argue that. Like, hey, no. bro, I'm on the freeway. This ain't, I don't but know marine pollutant is not a placard. It's, it's, it's a label, but it's not a placard. It makes sense. Uh, Doesn't, but whatever. I think that was the incident <laughs> I had. I was confused. Well, Should it was I remove it or not? Marine pollutant. Well, if you got pulled over and it was a hazmat and they asked you for documents, you didn't have documents, and you would have gone to jail. And it's like two fifty per placard, and then it's up to six months in jail or something like that. There's Shit. there's penalties and stuff. Do you have any hazmat tips for people that want to get it or have it? Uh, you just, know, little hacks like. Uh, just th- pay attention. Um, some of the Chinese placards are smaller, so yeah. the Long Beach PD and the all the hazmat guys, the commercial guys, they know the difference between the UN the, placards. They call them right. They're, no, UN number is different. No? That's the number that that. It goes across everything. Oh, that that okay, number okay. will be the same here as in China and Australia, whatever. That number is it's for that specific product. Okay. Like diesel and stuff yeah. and gas, it's the same number everywhere you go. That's the UN number. So then the placards, the ones they put on, like I say, China, they say that they're, they're a little bit smaller, like an inch smaller. And these guys became, they're really good, dude. They can see them from far. Hey, that's a Chinese placard. And they need to have the standard placard for the U.S. And they'll get you for it. I think they're identifiable because the font is slightly smaller too, no? The font has nothing to do with it. The placard is actually smaller. You can oh, tell. Mm-hmm. If you put them side by side, like, oh, yeah, that one's smaller. Mm. And these guys, they do it for a living, so they see it right away. Just like they see corrosive class A, they go, oh, that's overweight for sure. Nine out of ten, they're going to be over- overweight. Battery acids and, you know, just acids in general. Wow. Yeah. Removing the placards, do you, you always got to do it, or do, does the customer do it? See, there, that's an also in a gray area, too. There's a couple of guys that say that the customer does it. It's up to the customer. I know people that go to, like, they do the fireworks and stuff. They say the customer has to take them off. Me, personally, I take them off because sometimes they'll just leave them on, and, you know, Hanjin's really picky. It's one of the terminals that like, they see a little bit, they go around, and nobody wants to get turned around because— You don't just spray paint over it? I— uh, I do. <laughs> you know, I have my variety of colors, so I, I kind of, you know. You're an artist. Yes, there you go. <laughs> I remember at BNSF, they, they didn't fuck around. And that was, BNSF sucked because that's a big-ass detour if, if you have to go around for a little placard. And if you, I didn't, I'm not a hazmat driver, so I wouldn't carry that ladder. Like, how you see on all these trucks in the back, they have a ladder. Well, now there. I have a collapsible ladder I keep inside. It's probably about, what, this, this tall? And then I just kind of... Mm. Yeah. But no, like BNSF, like I said, they, they want the placards a certain height because they go inside the rail cars. Oh, like this rail car. It goes inside the rail car, so the placards have to be high because they go in. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's the reason why they want their placards. But sometimes I've picked up containers where the placards are really low. I'm like, oh, hey, man, you know, what's up? And, you know, they're, they don't care. It's like, hey, when it comes in, it has to be this high. If it goes out, I don't care where it's at. Yeah, like once you go into those pedestals or whatever, they're scanning everything out, checking it checking out. Taking pictures, yeah. Yeah. I well, all that's new. They Remember? used to get that line right there. I would be like, hey. Sheila. Yeah. Uh, get on top of your chassis to take off my placards and shit like that or the K-Rail. You yeah. Know? 
Well, remember, um, all those scanners are new. They're not that old. Hmm. They're a few years. We had the people that used to line up, and then they would go to break, and then you see the line back up. When we first did Lambridge, you know, the line was over there by Atlantic. And you just follow the line, and we just kind of park and just kind of, you know, BS outside. And then the line will move a little bit, and then you had to be finding to which line was which. And then yeah. just like the mechanics now, you see which mechanic is cool. You're yeah, like, yeah. and you start. There was this lady that would fucking hate my guts. I don't know why, <laughs> man. And me, like, I would, you know, those times you try to make conversation, and instead of making it better, you make it worse. <laughs> It's like, fuck, I can't get it right with this lady. Yeah. Just, no, I know who it was, she too. She just needs some vitamin D, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Man, no, but she... Uh, there were certain containers that it's a trip that they wouldn't allow them to... Well, that's when I heard that that you can't break certain seals, that the government doesn't let them or something. Like, they have, like, override. Like, no one can open this. No one can break this seal. I never heard about that one. Yeah, I did. So I was like... Because didn't they used to check them sometimes? They check the seal and make sure the container was on there, but mm. I never had an instance where they pop a seal right there where we were there. Mm. I've had an instance where we're at the train and they didn't have a seal. And then you'd be like, Ugh. Take it or don't take it. No, well, you know, the correct way to do it was you got to call security, they open it, they verify, and they put their seal on it. But then I've allegedly heard of guys that just carry seals and be like, man, I'm going to go through all that trouble, boom, put a plastic seal and just roll out. Because... Mm. You know, Lambridge days, it's it's all about the time and how many containers you can move a day. When my record, I thought I was doing too much, what, 13? And, and Mr. <laughs> Mr. Unstoppable here? Well, That know. kept it interesting. We would compete a lot, like friendly, you know. But a little bit of anger when, <laughs> when you'll come around and... This my asshole, special move? <laughs> this asshole would... We'll go into the terminal at the same time. Oh, yeah. This asshole would get out before me, but he wouldn't leave. He'll come He'll come to my spot and lock all his pins and, and be like, hey, hey, <laughs> See, I did that to you. I, I did like, that ah, to ah, Ivan. I did that ah. like quite a bit of times. Ivan did it to me a couple of times, too, but usually I was the one, you know, bling, bling. You know what I mean? You, you get... Uh, what time, like I said... Uh, we're, we're second generation truckers, so we're a little bit faster. We know some of the tricks. Some of the first generation truck drivers, like, you know, our uncles, our dads and stuff, they're a little bit slower and they don't really know how to be a little bit more uh, educated, I guess you would say. Yeah. You need to fix that slower side. You mean slower in performance, not in, in, yes. in mental capacity. No, man. mental capacity, no. They're, they're, we're they're about OGs. We're get canceled. No, no, no. I respect the OGs, man. They've been here for a long time. Like your dad, your dad works for me. And I, yeah. you know, he's cool. Like I, I, I enjoy talking to your dad. Cool cat. Hazmat as well. And um, just. He has know. a lot of patience too, right? Uh, a lot of them, they, they like don't, for some reason, they don't want to like talk shit back you know what i mean like, well it's not I don't or think, you catch some apologizing when they didn't even do nothing wrong, i don't think it's you know? that i think it's a it's a language barrier because like i said second generation speak english mm -hmm. and we can defend ourselves like hey this is not right hey what are we doing like when we first started at fargo all these guys are sleeping in the truck you know i did it for what like six months to a year i couldn't take it anymore my kids were small and i was like dude i'm not going to the lista i'm straight i'm i'm you know i can't I'll get, on, I'll get on the list and I still won't get shit. Well, that goes How does that work? Corruption, bro. It's, you know, old style, old old mentality, first generation truckers. I see a lot of people like, hey, I'm going to buy a, the dispatcher a bottle. I'm going to pay this dispatcher this. And, you know. I think you condition them to expect something of you. So it fucks well, it up for the, everyone else. That's the old timers. Yeah. If we come in, you're like, hey, what the hell? That's your job. You, you know, like. Why should I compensate you for doing your job? But like I said, they get spoiled and they, they expect it. You know, I've heard of guys with the managers that people are supposed to be in charge. They're getting a cut. So you're like, how do you fix that? And then, you know, as an owner, you know, at the end of the day, what do you want? You want your containers moved. You don't care who moves them. I don't care how. I've heard this guy say it. I don't care who moves it. I just want it moved, and that's it. I don't want to pay last Friday. I don't want to do nothing. I just want the work moved. I don't care who moves it. And you as a driver hearing that, you're like, well, I don't want to, you know, F this guy. I'm going to do me. I'm going to do as much as I can. And then if they need help, if it doesn't, you know, make a bit at me, I'm out. I don't care. That's the difference between, like, a big company and a small company. you like, I feel like in a smaller company, there's more um, communication. And like I said, I'm working for a friend. 
and it's more obvious to see what's going on. Like, hey, that's kind of weird. Well, well you, you know, know the guy, you notice it the guy I'm working with right now, he's an ex-driver as well. He he drives once in a while, but not really. Only when it's like ah, uh, you know. And um, there's communication. There's trust. He's very open, and uh, he tells me what's going on. If you would have known he mixes his Modelo with Coca Cola, would you have worked <laughs> for him? <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. He's a, he's a good guy. I, I we had that uh, that lunch, that brunch, right? We he, he, he we did it a, at at Boyle's baptism, my okay. son's baptism. We did it there the first time, and then we yeah. went to Chili's. Yeah, and then he did it there too, and we're like, what the? And that's just how they do it. I have yet to try it. He you didn't you tried it? I think he said it wasn't for you. I think you tried it. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, good times. But, but no, like I said, um, he's very upfront, and then you know he's a small business, just like every you know owner op is as well. So it's understandable. So you kind of build that camaraderie, and you understand. So when he has the last free day, you're like, ah, I just can't leave him high and dry. You know, I gotta do it, or you know, your dad or. But he's in guy. there, like putting in work with you guys. I, I think he 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 would stay up a lot, right? Keeping an eye on, on, on when well, something's available to make appointments and all that shit. You got to be on top of it. Well, it's it's stressful, dude. That's one of the reasons why, like, my wife pushes me to open up my own company. And I'm like, you don't understand what it entails, you know, having your own company. Because now it's harder to make appointments for empties. Because right now everybody with the empties, they're struggling because there's no appointments. There's a limited amount of appointments and everybody's fighting for them. So then, you know, you have to stay up late and then, you know, you got to worry about first receiving dates, bookings, when this ship is going to be here. You know, we have containers right now that had to be loaded in November and then the ship was supposed to arrive in December and it keeps pushing back and it's still not here. So you have a bunch of containers on hold, roughly around 18, 19 containers, and they're going to open up, you know, sometime next week. And you have, they, they're going to give you a two day window to put in 18 containers. And that's not just, that's just one customer. What about if you have several different customers? You know, all that stuff is stressful. And I get to go home and just, I don't have to worry about it. I just got to worry about Monday. Oh, what's, you know, what's for Monday? And he has to be worrying about, you know, what's next week, the following week, what's coming up. You know, you got orders coming in. You got to, you know, kind of balance everything out. Well, I don't want to butcher this because I'm I'm fairly new to uh I'm, I'm fairly inexperienced in how operating systems work, but you think technology would help him in a way, like keep track of all that? Like right now, how how do you guys do everything? Like yeah. written, no. keep track of everything? or No, or, everything's or, in the system, but you still get, you know, emails with, hey, these bookings are coming up. You're going to load these containers, these many containers. It comes out with 10, so you put them in the, in the system, and it's still, I mean... There's nothing beats paper. You can always write it down on paper, but if you lose paper, then what? So that's what you put on the computer in the system, you know. But everything's changing. All these vessels are being delayed. Look at all the vessels that are out right now. So, you know. How do you guys get reminded of all those things? Like last three days, do you keep track of what's in the yard, what, well, what's at a customer? I, I keep track of almost everything in the yard. So I'm always on top of this. So then when I know what vessels for what, so when we load these containers, I go, hey, what's up with this container? Hey, what's up with this container? And then he has a, uh, a tra he keeps track of it as well. So he has his notes as well. And um, we just kind of remind each other, hey, what's up with this container? Is it, is it available yet? Hey, what about this? So he's, he has a keep, he keeps a track on everything. It's hard, dude. It's hard. He's Does it limit your growth? Because I'm sure you could take on more capacity and then it kind of put a, a strain on you. Like, damn, that's more stuff to keep track of. You know, because as it is, you don't have to do that. To be honest, I don't think you have to be on top of it. If you didn't want to, you didn't have to. Yeah, but, but I, you're, my you're, wife you're, does get a little annoyed. But like I said, he's my friend. I know. And I know, why I know. wouldn't I want yeah, to see him succeed? Yeah. And then if he succeeds, I succeed. Yeah, yeah. So I don't see it that way. But I just wanted to point it out that it does help to keep track of, of to facilitate the process of focusing on your business, like actually doing the work. Like, cause keeping track of it is work as well. Then, well, uh, think about it. Know, like, on top of the actual driving, you want to fix the, you want to finish the container because yeah. you get paid. So I mean, me if I keep track of it, like, hey, I gotta, you know, and get all these containers. But I don't really look out for me. I look out for your dad. I look out for for my the other driver too. You know, because at the end of the day, we all gotta eat. And I think if we help each other out, I mean, if I go down, you know, they'll be there. Hey, help me out. Okay, yeah, don't worry about it. We help each other out. Yeah. I got a friend that 
that is in a similar situation and people like you guys i know you're capable of running a company if you really wanted to but I'm, i've always been curious like what stops you guys because like to pursue it i'm sure you see something that maybe we don't because from the outside it looks like oh yeah I, everyone thinks you just start a company and it's successful like no, you know, it, like that's the easy part. Probably start. I see, it. I see, like I see a couple of owners. Like I said, I know a couple of owners of companies. You know what I mean? And I see them. They put a lot of time and it's a lot of dedication. And I have, I have young kids, and I think it's. I want to see my kids grow. So maybe in the future, maybe if, if it presents itself, maybe I'll do it. But right now, it's it's a lot of time, um, and I don't want to neglect my kids. You know, my kids are everything. So I just kind of. Say, you know what? I'll just wait. I make enough money. I'm good. You know, my wife has a good job. I'm, yeah. I'm good right now. But, I mean, I know I'm, I'm more than capable of running a company. I know you are. <laughs> yeah, but I just, I think it's it's a lot of responsibility. And, um, and, and that's good on your part, too, knowing that, knowing that just because you know doesn't mean you should, right? Yeah. And then, like I said, there's, there's unwritten rules like rates and stuff. Uh, a lot of people keep rates like really close to the vest. Nobody will tell you. We tell a company, hey, how much you make? Uh, how much you charge this customer? And then they're like, oh, they want to find out because, hey, why are you getting paid so much? What about me? But they don't understand that, you know, you got to pay for chassis. You got to pay for the storage. You got to pay for operating costs. Like, you know, it's it's a lot of things involved. A lot of paperwork. You know, you got to keep invoices for, I think, like two years or something like that. Oh, man. It's a lot of things you got you to gotta take care of. Not only that, you got to be looking for customers and then the billing part. Like I said, some people pay in three months, some people pay in six months. So yeah. then how are you going to keep track of everything every three months? And you go, hey, here's my bill. And then sometimes say you forget to put an invoice in. Say, oh, this container slipped by, you know, it dropped on the floor. Or, oh, I didn't process this. And then you go back. Oh, well, this guy owes me this. And I go, oh, well, you never brought it in. And it's like, ah. it's a lot. So, yeah, I guess it, it, it might take time to build the rhythm at first, you know. Everybody struggles. There's got to be a recipe, you know, like a basic recipe. Like you do this, you do that, and and then focus on growth. Most people are haters. They won't tell you. Like, hey, you do this, you do this. You kind of, everybody's like, like. They're defensive for a reason, though, right? Because yeah. there's cutthroats out here. Like, well, not only that. If like, I know you charge eight, well, I really want that account, though, so I'm going to charge 750 Yeah. Hey, business is business, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and then some people leave for like five bucks, dude. Like, like they'll undercut you. Like, it's. Yeah, it's that magic word, volume. Yeah. Cause it adds up in a year, you know. But I mean, if you do volume like that, I mean, how much you just undercutting everybody, and then that's when the rate goes lower and lower and lower and lower, and yeah. um, it just defeats the purpose. Like you're gonna be doing chinos for like two hundred bucks. Remember when it slowed down? They were offering rates for Ontario for two hundred bucks, dude, and some people were doing it. And it was really, really bad. Remember, it was it was tough. Well, just cause it's slow, I don't. I I really doubt that the rate changed on them. Um, it does. Brokers, brokers take advantage. Just how uh, you know companies take advantage. Right now, companies are taking advantage, and they're charging an arm and a leg right now. But it'll come it goes, to a time. It goes back and forth, then. Yes. So when you're fair with your customer, I believe that when everything slows down, you'll still have that, you know, I guess um, rapport with them. Yeah. And you'll get their business because you know what? When it was really expensive, you didn't go twist my back and stuff and i'm not gonna nickel and dime you for when it's slow you know is it okay to remind them of that or do you think that's unethical like hey bro remember when, i when think everyone was i think they you know I, yeah i think they know because they know because they they brokers have multiple containers multiple customers mm -hmm. and they just like dispatchers they have their favorites so they know yeah, there's oh, people that it's an issue to work with but like ah this guy this guy's calling me again yeah well, you know, we did Lambridge, you know, you know who the hard workers were and you know who weren't, you know, some people, they didn't want to stay. Some people were like, I don't work nights. And, you know, at they that time, the secretaries. Yes. Nine to five. And then, you know, these guys will come in and work from, you know, six to two o'clock and they were gone. And sometimes they would sit there and wait all day at, at Santa Fe for a load and that never came. And then all of a sudden everything opened up at night and who was there, who was there to do the work? You know, I, I really learned. How to work with the night guys. The night guys, those guys yeah. knew how to work. They knew how to, all the tricks of the trade and yeah. stuff, you would say. Yeah. All the unspoken things like, oh, you got to do it like this. And, and they weren't they weren't really bad guys, dude. We thought, we saw them like, oh, look, those guys pay. Those guys do this. Those guys do that. But then 
working at night, you were like, hey, wait a minute. These guys aren't that bad. These guys just, you know. Nah, fuck that. There's still some guys I know for sure paid, but not all of them. Not so, all of them, but yeah. you know what? Sometimes the dispatcher forced them because yeah. I was there when he would starve them out and just to piss them off, he would give me the work. Mm hmm. And they understood that. And it goes, oh, they're giving you the work right now because he's trying to starve me out so I can pay him, but I'm not going to pay him anymore. See? And I said, well, that sucks for you, but. The one time that I, I fell into that that whole, you could say bribing the dispatcher, it felt, it's weird. It's, it feels like you do some, you know you did something wrong. It just feels weird. I, I went, I kind of felt like a lame. You know, I went in the morning because this motherfucker's just hoarding all these uh, Egg McMuffins. <laughs> You know, he had a little tower of egg McMuffins. Yeah. It's like this 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 king, you know, that you worship and you bring offerings to. Sir, give me a load. Yeah. I brought you breakfast. And then still not getting nothing. Like just Well, I think it, that like, comes uh, from the ownership, though. That's the ownership because he let that get that far. But that, yeah. that goes to the owner. Like, I don't care. I just want to move my stuff. I don't care. I never did that again. But I, I was getting desperate, bro. Like, I, I wasn't getting loads. You know, See, eventually I had to leave because I couldn't. Uh, I got behind on everything, and that's when I I lost the first truck. Mm -hmm. Then I came back. Then I ended up with with the black truck. The, well, that was the first black truck. That was yeah. my truck. Yeah, the other you lost one. that one. Yeah, and then you came back. and You got the other one. Yeah, yeah, I got Ivan's. Yeah. <laughs> no, we no we you know, I I, I you know me, dude. I'm kind of upfront and stuff. So you know, he would tell me there was nothing. I would go back there and let me see. And I would see the computer, and I'd be refreshing, and I kind of <laughs> learned how to use that system. Yeah. And I was looking at it, yeah. and then I was like, "Hey, there's a lot available here. Boom, let me dispatch." I go, "Hey, wait, wait, go to go to no." Like, oh, there is, huh? No, crazy. and I would, I, I learned how to dispatch it to myself. I'm like, oh, that's right, Quan, I got it. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I said his name, that. So I just dispatched myself. You know, I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna do this one." And then it came to a point where you always had that. Oh, I got a load, but it's last free day. So I would tell him, I would be like, hey, dude, I'm not touching it. I'm going to be, I'm your last free day guy. No, I'm straight. Wow. Okay, what do you want? I go, give me a round. I'll yeah. do the round first and I'll do the last free day last. So what I would do sometimes is go ask for it. It was uh, when uh, APL first put their stuff on the ground. Remember when APL was all wheels? Yeah, beautiful times. And then they went, hey, we're going to start putting stuff on the ground. And you're like, ugh, the machines kept breaking down and everything. And you were just like, ugh. So then... Yeah, I would say, okay, oh, let's cut a deal. Okay, give me a round. I'll do it first, F10, and I'll do it. So I will finish the round fast. I'm like, hey, let me get another round. Or else I'm going home. Oh, you can't do that. Hey. So you give me another round. And then... um, You made sure that it worked out for both of you. You didn't fall victim to like just being that sucker, always saving the day and expecting a reward. That was me for some time, always trying to save the day. I'm like... I Cause you try to figure out uh, dispatcher's rhythms. Like this guy's like that. It, this guy works this way. So I'm like, I'm trying to figure this guy out. So maybe I gotta earn my way in. Let me just save the day as much as I can, and then maybe he'll take care of me. But that guy wasn't like that. But then I classified. <laughs> then he just classified me as like, okay, this is the. the sucker. You're always gonna be there to do the last free day, and you yeah. saw the guys going around in circles and circles and circles, doing what six, seven containers at night. I'm like, where's my reward? It's coming. Let me take care of this last free day. Yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 I went to go look at the system, and I saw everything that was pending. I learned that um, the way they had it set up was somebody at the steamship line would upload everything into their system. So you saw it, and it would turn green when it was available. Okay. So I would see that, and I would refresh, refresh, refresh. And i go, hey, go make yourself a coffee or whatever, and I'd be right there refreshing, refreshing, and boom. And it would give you the location. So I see wheels. Kind Ooh. sir, kind sir, can you please stop hitting the table, sir? Oh, my bad. <laughs> Thank you. So then it's I'll, a patio table. I don't know. First, first podcast table I've had. So no, that's good. It's nice. It's um. No, so then I would see it available, and I would dispatch myself. Why? Because I know if I told him, he wouldn't give it to me. So after a while, he'd be like, "Okay, okay, I'll do it." And then the owner walked in. I go, "What's he doing behind the computer?" He goes, "I'm just <laughs> checking." And then. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? No, he's like, hey, what's your number again? I've been here for like eight years. Don't worry about it. Triple <laughs> <laughs> seven, bro. <laughs> no, no, no. That was me, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that guy really made me feel like shit every time I went in. What are you doing here? Yeah. But you got some loads This guy, me? this guy. Uh, yeah, you tell him, yeah, go ahead and dispatch him to me. Yeah. Yeah, this guy was. Uh, whatever. Uh, hey, what do you need again? Uh, what's uh, your name again? Just email me. Yeah. Back to the laptop. 
gambling. He looked like, he looked annoyed. Like he, he'll see you walk in. He's like, oh. it was a good Damn, thing, dude. Bro. It was a good. It was good. I, I, we, when we got our upper hand against him, it was it felt good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did he get blocked on social media? No, I don't know. I, I found out he had an account. And anyway, <coughs> yeah, no. Yeah, dude. Um, you, do you have um? Can you share a little trucking journey with us? A little timeline, how you started? The, you didn't end up at the ports right away, right? No. So I, I started working at a, a galvanizing company, picking up metal, and they get it. They coat it in zinc for. Um, they use it to. It wouldn't rust. Okay. So you use it in marine type situations. There's something around the port and stuff. Okay. So just galvanized. Yeah. And then uh, from there, I I applied at Coke. One year in, and I was like, okay. So then I got hired. So I worked at Coke for about two years. Uh, I got hurt, tore my meniscus, and um, I got What's laid that? off. What, what part of the body? It's uh, your, something, something in your knee. Oh, okay. Like a cartilage. Ah, te jodiste la rodilla. Yeah, well, that's, that's why I limp sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, so then uh, I had surgery, and I got laid off. And then, you know, childhood friends, their their dads drove, you know, trucks and pulling containers out of the port. And they would say, come be a real trucker, bro. We don't touch freight. And I was like, <laughs> ugh. So then, you know. Was that a, but what made you like want to be a trucker? Like, because well, of the, because of the job and the income or like it, it got well, your Well, I saw the income because remember, uh, their dads were yeah. truckers and, yeah. you know, they made good money and then they're like, Hey, come on, let's go over here. So they, they, bec- uh, Steve became a trucker before okay. first. And then, you know, me and Ivan kind of went to Followed. school together. Okay. We were working at the same job. We are like, Hey, let's go. And we got our license at the same time. Oh, I remember. Like, you did Jiffy Lube. Yeah, right? we were at Jiffy, Jiffy Lube. Yeah, stories. we were at Jiffy Lubes. Yeah, we were at Jiffy Lube. And then uh, I remember that story about that guy. You said that you or Ivan said he was crazy. Like, uh, to remove the plug of the oil and put it on his chest. Oh, yes. oh it's, it's a lot of, uh, lot of, lot of crazy guys that worked there. It was a good times. We had fun. Yeah, yeah a lot of little, uh, allegedly, a lot of little um, mm, stuff that makes you not want to send the, the wifey to get an oil change. You know, like because they, they, a lot of like, oh, you're car needs look lady well some some you guys have all these metal shavings some some guys <laughs> that, that's illegal yeah so some guys didn't know they, they weren't properly trained because mm. i was one of those techs i was the one that would come talk to you and you know i just explained everything and it's just everything's in the in the manual just gotta you know hey you've done this yeah okay we do it here if not go do it somewhere else it doesn't matter just get it done you went up real quick right there huh you ended up being a manager yeah the store manager there for quite a bit some time and then um I left that, and then, like I said, um, there were drivers. So I went with Steve a couple of times to do some loads in uh, in uh, like, Chino. Oh, okay. And then I went into the port with him one time. We went to PCT or Evergreen. I don't know, but he told me, hey, come in. Let's go. And we went. I was looking around, and um, I got off. He goes, hey, disconnect the chassis. And I was like, okay. So I'm right there just looking around, just like, what? You know, if, if they don't go back and look at the cameras, like, oh, some fat guy just got off. And I wasn't that fat back then, you know? Yeah. Then I but jump out. Like, yeah, hey, I wasn't injured. Yeah. No, I, no, I wasn't oh, injured. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I jumped out. Like, oh, okay. All right, cool. I think it was PCT. I think it was PCT. And then um, I said, okay, I'm going to try it. So then little by little, I got my permit. And then, you know, me and Ivan will go drive with Steve. And then we were in Chino getting on the freeway. And then one thing he told me that it kind of stuck with me, like, you know, I missed the gear and I had to start all over. And there was a long line behind me. A long line where? Like behind traffic? me of traffic, yeah. Because I had to start over and I missed the gear. So the he freeway? told me to stop. Yeah, on the entrance, on the on ramp. Oh. Euclid okay. on Euclid okay. on ramp. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that then, one's a busy one. Yeah. So then he goes, Hey man, relax. You know, they can't go over you. What's your point? Just slow down. Just start over. And that really stuck with me. I was like, Well, you're right. They can't go over me. They gotta wait. And if you flip, they just go around. So that, yeah. that too, like you got to well, take it easy. It's a straight line. It's just like, so I, that really stuck with me. So I go, you know what? It's true. So after that, I just started shifting and look at me now. Hey. <laughs> look at me now. Yeah. Look at me now. If I could edit greatly, I would have added that in right now in the background. <laughs> you know that song? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that that's that's a good journey. Yeah, Good no, story. Like, all these guys uh, drive trucks like Ivan, Steve, you know, Jose, um, you, your dad. We had our own little clique, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Doing Lambridge. And I remember uh, 
racing yeah, out of. Uh, we had a nickname already for at night time, but I, I forgot it. I know we had some kind of name. I know he's trying to think of it. Um, I don't remember. I don't know, but it, it revolved around nighttime work. Yeah, and I know I wasn't midnight hookers. <laughs> <laughs> But. No, but I mean, we had fun, dude. Like, remember, um, it we, NYK would be really, really jam packed with Lambridge. You had the NYK OCL and the Hay Pack Lloyd, and it was all the one row, everything yeah, yeah. stacked up, and we were just being yeah. there, just mashing, you know, mm -hmm. A20s, A40s, mm -hmm. and then racing out of uh, YTI and going to Santa Fe. You almost flipped the load right there by uh, yeah. TTI. <laughs> yeah, under that bridge, we make that. Yeah, left. we were racing to Santa Fe. Like, oh, I got in front of him. And then uh, he got to the outside lane and click, 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 click. Yeah. Like, a, oh. You guys would fuck with me. I always want to be in front. And yeah. I want to be in front. Yeah. And then I, I knew I was about to flip because I heard all the... The cracking. The leaf spring. Ka -ka, ka -ka. I'm like, oh, and no, And I was right next to you. I was like, oh, oh, he's going over. He's going over. And then, ah, oh, no, he did it. Oh, you were excited, huh? It was. Asshole. First time we've seen a truck flip <laughs> over in live and in vivo. Yeah. <laughs> well, it didn't happen. Te quedaste con las ganas. Yeah. Well, you know... It, it's it was it was good times that I liked it. I liked doing Lambridge. It was you, fun. You got any good port stories? You remember any uh, incident? I remember one time uh, we were on a Friday. We usually finish early. Some guy came in with a container offering it, and um, nobody. It was rare, dude. We never. <laughs> this guy never gave containers away. Like, oh, what's going shit. on? <laughs> what's going on? Like, why is this guy giving a container? I kind of looked at my buddy and was like, Hey, what's going on? Why is this guy giving a container? Something's fishy. And then you know. Here comes the dispatcher, and hey, come here. And what happened? Oh, and man. There's this guy going back. That fucking guy. Yeah. Uh, that guy was me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Security guard closed the lane on you and then almost flipped the container there. And then They had a little attitude right there, and that, that shit would piss me off, and it got the best of me. And yeah. this guard just started, he wanted my license. Next thing I know, he's chasing me. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> So I start going, I, I run over all the cones, I go in, I run over all the speed rooms, all the stop signs on the way out. I see him, I see him running. He's running too. Yeah. Because I think back then he was trying to, oh, they do? They still have them. Yeah, yeah the, the tried, spikes. Yeah, he tried to beat me because at that point it kind of looked like I was stealing the container, yeah. but they just didn't engage it because. Yeah, they, they, they closed the lane, the guys mm -hmm. didn't let you in, and mm -hmm. you were waiting there patiently. It was Friday, mm -hmm. we were going to get paid, and. It was just one of those things where, like, I want to get this last container. I blew a before. gasket. Like, why would yeah. you close the lane on me? Like, and I know they did it on purpose. You know, I think I had honked or something. I, it, something no, happened. It well, was, the thing is, okay, this is what happened. So they closed the lane on you. And then, you know, at ICTF, come on, dude. One lane goes and then another guy goes. The other guy didn't let you in. So you started honking at that guy. You were going back you and forth. And they're like, their solution was, okay, we'll close the lane. Fuck all you guys. No, 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 no. It, no, they had to close the lane. The guy went on break. Remember, because ICTF is union. See the timing then. The timing I assumed then. I, I yeah, assumed see, a lot. You, you don't then. know. Yeah, I you didn't know. Assumed a lot. So I thought it was directed at me, like yes. for honking. Yeah. And I hated. But that you weren't thing. honking at them. You were honking at the guy that was you were fighting with on the side. That was your turn. And like, no, 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 it's my turn. Mm -hmm. You know. Mine, mine, mine. Yeah. Say some of these guys, like I said, some of these guys are cool, dude. Like just like like longshoremen, like they're cool. Like, I talk to a lot of longshoremen. Why do you whisper when you say longshoremen? No, no, longshoremen. <laughs> I talk to a lot of longshoremen. Yeah. Like, they're cool. They're people just like us. Yeah, working class. Look at, like... Someone mentioned that working class. Like, like we're all working class. Like When you go to when you go to the trouble window before, yeah. you were confused. Like, oh, you're, you're ILW. Oh, no, no, I'm a driver. Oh, you look like us. I've had that before. Mm -hmm. You know, because we speak English. They, they assume most truck drivers are, you know, I hate to say it, but they're assholes. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, you see the guys, dude. They, you know... Throw piss bottles everywhere. They throw bags and stuff on the floor, you know. And it's just like everybody else. They're they're people like us. So you know, you have bad guys and good guys. Just like drivers, you have good ones and bad ones. It's just you know. It's like that female that fucked the wrong guy, and now all men are bad. Like you can't go based off of one experience and just blame ev put everyone in that category. But if she's attracted know? to bad guys, then what is she gonna see? Nothing but bad guys. Oh, shit. But like I said, there's a lot of truck drivers that are they're just you know, ugh. like they kick you out of the chassis pit and you're still going back and forth trying to get a chassis. You're still trying to sneak in and doing that. It's like oh, it's closed, so dude. Like, come on, you know. Mm. Some people are hard headed. Some people don't learn. 
Well, I think I learned that day to keep it cool at ICTF. <laughs> well, you I'm had like, no choice. Cone, ran it over, went back around the guards chasing me because he, he wanted to get my license so that he could ban me. So well, he I'm saw like, the company. I'm like, you're not going to ban me. I'm going <laughs> to escape. <homie." laughs> he I saw the company. Running. I've never seen that old man run so fast. He's like, doo, 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 doo. top flight security of, of ICTF, Craig. <laughs> they and changed all those guys, too. He really wanted to get there and and bring the spikes up. So yeah. I would have imagined he I didn't know he was doing that. I thought he was just trying to run over there to like block me or no. be like, no, they hit the spikes and I made it out. I thought I, I thought I made it out cleaning. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting at the yard. And <laughs> Chilling. Like, anybody want to terminate this load? I got hey, load. for free. I'll give you the ticket and everything. You had the ticket in your hand. Like, yeah, here, bro, then, I'll give you yeah. the ticket. Here back you go. Then, that was currency. I'll and I was like, uh-uh. Like, something's yeah. fishy. And then, you know, this project came out. Hey, come here. Okay. We need to give you up, huh? Are they going <laughs> to block the whole company out? Yeah, and remember, they did a lot of containers, dude. They were doing a lot of containers. Like, if I moved, what, 30 containers, you moved 20. Uh -huh. That's just two guys. And there was yeah. like 70 guys working there. Yeah. A lot of volume. Yeah. A lot of volume. So, yeah, they, they got me. They, so, that's a good story, bro. <laughs> How long were you banned there for? I think a while. Well, who, who somebody had to lift that ban. Somebody somebody re put you in the system and you were able to go back. I forgot which company it was. Yeah, I forgot too. But I ended up going back. And, was then, your master? I, and then I got banned again. I'm still banned. Again? Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what I did. I think it must have been a stop sign issue. Nah, but that's temporary. Yeah. Yeah, I went to UP and then I couldn't get my load out. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going through all that shit, calling around. And I, there was a lot of work then, so I'm like, mm -hmm. how am I going to be wasting time? Yeah. Uh, so, so you've made some friends at the ports? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Like, how did that happen? Like, you just chop it up or what? Well, yeah. You're pretty dude, good at starting conversations and, you know, yeah. engaging and keeping it. Yeah, no, I, I talked to a lot of people. Like, there's always times, I don't know if it was you or Ivan, we, were, uh, we pulled up to the Lambridge pile with 20s. I think it was Ivan. And the guy had got off the top handler, and um, he was leaving to lunch. Yeah. And the guy, the the clerk was like, hey, that's it. And then he saw me. He was like, hey, what's up? He goes, unit 20? He he was already off the machine inside the truck. He said, hold on, hold on. He went back in the machine and got me the, the, the 220s. And he serviced us, and we left before lunch. But what led to that? You already knew him by then? Yeah, you know, we chop it up here and there. Hey, what's up? You know, introduce himself. And I was like, oh, you know, whatever. And then um, it just, you just started chopping it up. And then, you know, at, at YTI, um, you know, the clerks, some of them are just ladies and stuff. And I just started chopping it up with them. You know, we do a lot of hazmat. You got to go into the trouble window a lot. You know, sometimes I would see them at the lunch truck and I'd, I'd buy them lunch. Why not? You know, they're cool. You know what I mean? They're people just like us and they appreciate it. So they go, oh, this guy, you know, I, he didn't, he wasn't in trouble. He didn't have nothing. He was just right there at the lunch truck and I just bought them lunch. And then all of a sudden we just build a rapport. And then, you know, there were certain loads that were in closed areas and, she would open them for me. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I was very grateful. And she was a, a good friend, but she retired already. I don't know what happened to her. Okay, okay. A lot of it, I, I'm seeing that it's just, it's so simple, but I don't know why most of us can't do it. Like, just communicate effectively and politely, you know, I, respectfully. I think some some guys mess it up. Like, there was the guy, the, the, the one clerk at White Tail that would yell at everybody. If you were new, he would yell at you. The short guy with the mustache. It's not the, the. That's what Wallace supposedly they said. Yeah, allegedly. Yeah, yeah. allegedly. I don't know. Yeah. He was cool with me. I mean, he you know what I noticed? Once. He was cool with you when he saw that you knew how to defend yourself. Right? Yes, and, and you know what I mean. Yeah. After that, he was like, "Hey, what's up, mijo?" And then he exactly. would hook you up. Yeah, he yeah. was cool. Yeah. And but that tripped me out. But then when you would see the new guy. And they go, oh, that guy's new. And he'd be like, what the F are you doing? Yeah. Back up water. And the guy's like, hey, a deer uh, in headlights. Yeah. You know, it yeah. was a spectacle. But, you know, you still get new guys in the port here. And then, you know, yeah. you were new once before. So, you know, they ask you, hey, what's up? And go, oh, yeah. You go this way. Everything's in alphabetical order, numerical order. You kind of go like this. The chassis are over there. And you help each other out because you were new at one time before, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Unless uh, it's about to be lunch, then don't don't talk to me, buddy. I got to go. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you're going to get it no matter what. Either you're at a certain time, you know that you're going to make it. You're expected, okay, if it's 1130 and I'm barely coming in, if you get flipped, you're lucky. But yes. the most time, 1130, you're done. Yeah. 1115, you're kind of uh, danger zone. And then don't get mad if you already know that's what comes with it. It's a possibility. Yeah, dude. I, I would get mad like, ah, like, <laughs> I know it's part of the job. Like, why am I getting mad? You know what I mean? We're doing cross talks. 
Remember? I'll be mad at, like, I'll get stuck for lunch, and then I'll see you coming. Like, you do made it out, then you'll be coming. You do that shit where you lock the pins. <laughs> yeah. Like, cross docks. Remember cross docks? Remember 8, uh, 8 p.m. at night? Yeah. And I got flipped, and I went in, I came back. I got flipped, came back again. You were still there, and then you are like, mm-hmm. ah, that's it. I'm going to end don't it all. About it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna end it all. Yeah, I'm gonna get service. Did they service you that night? I don't know. I don't think they kicked you out. Cause uh allegedly. I was still working on, you know, like better um, I think it's just it was just you were just frustrated because you knew they were skipping you because they skipped you quite a bit of times. Yeah. And you know that it's up to their discretion. Like if you're being you know, like really aggressive and hostile, like that's not the way, dude. It is not, and you have to go through it sometimes, and yeah. and learn. Some people don't learn though; they keep they just build more hate. Like, yeah, they make it worse. And one thing I see is like I start shaking my head, and you get out of the truck and you do this, like put your hands in the yeah, air. Yeah, what the hell? That's like the worst on? thing to do. It's like, like, what's up oh, with this guy? All right, all right, that truck you. skip him. Yeah, I've, I've heard I've heard uh, clerks and you know they go, we're gonna skip that guy because he cut the line. Remember the long long lines and. People would just, oh, I'm just going to my spot, and oh, my spot was open. I go, okay, that line behind you is nothing, okay. But the line behind me is not going to that spot. My spot's open, bro. Yeah, it's open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, you would skip me then if you were if you were one of them. No, I, I always, you know, in the beginning when I was first brand new, it just frustrates me. Like, if it's open, let me go to it. Yes, but no, when I first started. Uh, you know, Steve. Steve was uh, kind of like my mentor, I guess. Yeah. So you know, I seen that line of Fargo trucks right there, chilling. Damn it, I said that name again. I seen the line, and you know, I didn't know. So I went and I backed up to my spot. And I got my container, and then um, really calmly, dude. The guy's really good. Uh, really calmly goes, "Hey man, um, where are you going? Oh, two D. I got my container already. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, did you look in in one D? And I was like, no, I'm not going to one day. I went to 2D. Well, there's a line there. You see the line? Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, all those guys are going to 2D. And I was like, okay. And you see all those trucks? Yeah, they're from our company, right? Yeah, all the containers are in that row. So you don't think there's one guy going to that same spot? And I was like, ugh. He goes, hey, dude, I didn't know. He goes, yeah, that's what I'm calling you. I'm letting you know. Like, if now that you know, you do it again, that's that's like a, a dick move, you know? You don't do that. And uh, I, I learned told you from that, that again? Steve. Ah. Uh, Mr. Kilo. And he was there and he was there in line and he saw yeah. you do that? Oh, but I didn't. Okay. But he knew I was fresh. I was brand new. Yeah, yeah. Fresh, fresh. So I didn't know. So then afterwards, I knew. Like, oh, hey, you want this spot? You want this spot? No, no, no. Uh, no. Once you got all the no's, then you, then you go. Yeah, yeah. But you don't always have everyone's number, like no, no. Companies. You have to, you have to drive by, dude. You have to drive by. You yeah. know, you know, you know. You yeah, have to drive yeah. by, dude. Come on. Nah, don't make no eye contact. Bro. And then <laughs> if you don't hear honking, then you're good. Nah, usually these guys, what they do, they'll go in there and then they'll back up and they'll jump in the sleeper because mm. they don't want any confrontation. Ah, but some people live for it. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on uh, own authority or, or being leased on? Well, own authority, it's it's going to be the new way now, I believe. Uh, least on, if you're lazy, bro, you want to be a company driver, honestly. Because you're at your own rhythm. You do two or three containers. Like secretarias, I think they'd be perfect for being company drivers. Own authority, you're a hustler. If you hustle, you do more than one, two, three containers, then you lose money. Being a being a driver, you yeah. actually make more money for the company. Company yeah. drivers want the owner operator driver, but with the company pay. You get it? Yeah, yeah. Because they they maximize their investment. You get a you see how many? I mean, I'm like, I hate to throw people under the bus, but how many of these um, hourly drivers you see just park? You see them. Some of them actually are hard workers. They they go and they do their job and they they pump out as much as they can. But you see some of these guys just parked inside the terminal, just chilling. And you're like, ah, you know. Yeah, I remember they used to be very nice and let me go like in, in their spot. Yeah. You had guys just you park still, on the you side, still, you still wait for it to get full, and then they'll pull up. You still see them in line, and, you know, some of the chuchos, they go around the line, they're trying to cut, and that's where they cut. Hey, let me in. Yeah, go ahead, bro. You know, the lines at ITS, they're, they get pretty long sometimes. And then... The guys come sneaking into the side, and then they know who to ask. Oh, well, that's a company truck. Hey, can I get in? Yeah, go ahead. And the owner operators behind you are like, hey, what the hell is going on? And 
it sucks, but it happens. So just because that uh, company driver was okay with it doesn't mean the owner out behind them was, because that's no. going to affect him. Yeah, because well. it's, it's one more guy that didn't make the line. Yeah. Uh, cut the line. You know, there's guys that have been there for three hours, and this guy gets here in 15 minutes, and is like, hey, I'm here. Kind of sucks, but, I mean, it's everyone for themselves mentality sometimes out there. It sucks because they're doing the same thing. You personally, like your business, how how are you, which way are you gonna go? Uh, I have my own authority. Yeah. Yeah, but in, with intent with that is like I have to get a pay raise. Like I told them, like, hey man, like if I'm gonna use my own authority, uh, I'm gonna need more money per load, and they're aware of that. And then I still want that whole thing where like, hey, this container is overweight. I'm not liable for it. You know, I want that little slip saying, hey, this is my container. This is my whatever. It could all be in writing. You just yes, of work course. it out. Cool. Of course. Yeah, a lot of people are getting their own authority right now, so we'll see how that goes. I, I still don't understand 85 fully, so I'm going to. Yeah, neither do I. I, I. I know they don't want you to be an employee, but it's just the way of the companies not trying to get that hit for that lawsuit. Saying, that, oh, I'm an employee. Well, you tell me where to go and this and that. So. Yeah, that makes sense. That could be part of it. Mm-hmm. This is random. Um, have you ever had a shit in a bucket? No, sir. Not to, not all these years. No. A bag? Nope. I've peed in a bottle before, but I try not to. Like it's there's restrooms all over the place. Sometimes they're pretty bad, but I yeah. mean, if you know you have to use the restroom, you know there's restrooms at the entrance, but people choose not to. Like Hanjin has restrooms right where you go in. You can pull over and take a leak. Evergreen, same thing. Uh, Piri, right when you pass the trouble, there's a restroom there. There's restrooms everywhere, dude. There's no need. Oh, you think so? You think people pass on it thinking they're just gonna get out sooner? They prioritize, yeah. like, getting well, look, out. even YTI, they have restrooms there. There's restrooms everywhere, but people choose not to use them because they want to get out. Yeah, and they then think, if they get stuck, that's when it becomes now a they become a victim because oh, okay, okay, now they become a victim. I think they victimize themselves. Uh, there's restrooms everywhere, dude. Hanjin has restrooms every what when the empty piles, there's like every every stop, there's a restroom there. Why not? Why not pull over? Why? Because you're too busy. You don't want to, you know, there's a long line and, oh, my God. Like, hey, dude, take the time. Do your thing. And that's it. It is. Most of these companies pay waiting time. Some people don't pay waiting time, but most of them do. Speak up. Yeah, sometimes just the waiting time doesn't compensate as it should if you got the load out. Well, know? yeah, but you don't want, nobody wants me. I don't want waiting time. I'd rather take the load out. Yeah. So, I mean, waiting time is just a. And, you know, hey, sorry you got stuck, but, hey, there's a little something, you know. Here's money for lunch or whatever. Yeah. I used to get, like, the most I got waiting time was 50 bucks after two hours. The least I got was 35 after two hours as an owner-op. And I forgot how much it was as a company driver. Like, when you do 1099, like, oh, like 25 that's, bucks. that's, I mean, I think if you're a company driver, you're doing 1099, something's wrong. You can't do 1099. You got to do W2 if you're a company driver. I, I I have no way of you being a 1099 as a company driver. It makes no sense. How's, where's your deductions? Some guys want it like that. Why would that be? Do you think? Well, you have to pay taxes. What are you going to write off? You can't write off anything. So then why do these guys want it like that? Because it feels like a bigger chunk when they get paid, maybe? Mm, I think it's more of a company wants it because they don't have to deal with taxes and all that. Oh. I don't think I don't think the driver wants to be a 1099. Well, from my understanding, I don't, I don't know. Somebody could be wrong. Somebody could tell me, no, no, I want to be 1099. Well, I don't see any benefits to it. Yeah. Unless you know how to save. And then when tax claims come, they go, oh, here's your, here's your percentage. Well, no, I'm not too good at that. Yeah. So, what about uh, healthcare as an independent contractor? There's a lot of guys that don't have it, and there's programs union out people there. People have it, but well, as an independent, you should do your research and make sure you're good. Yeah, there's it. websites out there, but I mean, as a you're you're going to different things. Like as the longshoremen, they they're W two, they have a structure, they get you know workman's comp and all that stuff. Independent. You're in charge of all that. I know a couple of guys that pay into the workman's comp, and they do have workman's comp. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's programs out there because, you know, everything's based off your taxes. So if you do your taxes, you you fill out the form, and then you you be, you know, the government has programs to help you with health care. A lot of people don't want to pay. That's the only thing, you know. It all comes down to money. At the end of the day, everything's money. 
how much have you heard it can be for like one person or the household or it all depends how much you make does that have anything to do with like Obamacare? Remember Obamacare came no, around. No, but they they have the, that was supposed to like that's the force website. you to to get healthcare, and if you don't, you pay it every year. Yeah, you penalty. pay a penalty. Yeah, you pay a penalty. I don't know if that penalty has like a cap where it ends or yeah. it just doubles every year. No, it's it's a cap. It's uh, a cap. But you know, you just fill out the forms, dude. Like I fill out my forms for my kids. My kids have insurance, but uh, I fill out my I get my taxes and I fill everything out. And they go, oh, you qualify for this, you qualify for that, and that's it. Hmm. You can still qualify for like Medi-Cal as well if on on a owner operator income. You think? Well, yeah, it depends how much you make, dude. Like, there's people that make a hundred and ten thousand, but all their deductions are in diesel, insurance, and parking, and they report truck. the take home, and then that that's determines yeah, it's if all of your taxes, that. yeah, yeah, your net. A lot of like I hate to see like when when um oh that's one topic the healthcare. Another one is like life insurance. A lot of guys don't plan, and I hate to see like. It's happened. That so it's, it's, such a, it's away. unfortunate. Yeah. And then you have the family worrying, like having to do car washes. And, and uh, of course, like the trucking community is very supportive, right? But when, when shit goes down, but that's a limited time. Like eventually everyone forgets about that family and, and they're left to, you yeah. know, fend for themselves. It sucks. So I think that should be like a norm to bring it into like. Well, you, there's. We're all going to die. I don't know why we think that just because yeah. we don't buy it, we won't die. Well, the like, thing is you got to buy the right policy, too, because some of these policies I heard that they don't pay, dude. So you got to do your research on your policies of what you're going to get because yeah. I've heard of people getting denied. Oh, well, you know, this the is something ones, else. The accidental death dismemberment, if I'm saying it properly. But that no, one will find any excuse to say that why not to pay well you? it depends which company there's companies out there do you gotta find the right company do your research like everything else like hey th see how much uh, this insurance has denied claims and why and stuff like that I, that's what I would do yeah it's good you brought that up as far as the type because like I said I don't I'm not sure this is the type but there was an incident where this guy had the flu and he was driving and he got t-boned at a red light or some shit and then um they didn't pay. They said that it was a possibility that he sneezed and momentarily he, he closed his eyes and he didn't see that. And that's why, you know, it wasn't a real like accident. It was it could have been prevented. But there's a I lot know of it sounds shady. Hearsay. It's a lot of hearsay, yeah. though. But that's that's when you, just you don't get a lawyer. Pay. They find yeah. something. Yeah. You get a lawyer and fight it. Or and also another guy that make sure to check like the suicide clause. Mm -hmm. There's some guys that are this guy had bought it and he wrote the letter, you know, I don't think I want to be here. I'm going to check out, but I'm about to take care of you guys with this. I'm sorry. I'm out. Mm -hmm. um, the, the family didn't get shit because he, he killed himself before the two years. There was a two-year clause like for Ooh. suicide. You had to keep the policy more than two years. Which I think it works sort of like like that 10-day uh, cool-off period for weapons, mm -hmm. right? Maybe that's the same thing they do with suicide ones. But you oh, otherwise, yeah. people that are suicidal, let me, you know, uh, I'm going to blow my brains out tomorrow. Let me go buy this policy real but quick. Let me, let me go ahead and hook up my family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, it matters what type. We should, I'm actually going to have a guest on that towards the end of the month. She does all those policies and stuff. So, I'm going I'm to pick her brain on that, hmm. you know. But everything so. at the end of the day is about money, dude. All these companies, you know, they want to make money. They want to charge. And everybody wants money. Money, money, money. Makes the world go round. Money, money, money. You know, there could be a lot of money in one household if um, if you got both sides of the tracks in it. Like, do you know of anyone that has a, maybe that the household has someone that's a trucker and someone that works at, in the, at the docks, like a longshoreman? I know a, a guy that did both. He was a truck driver and a longshoreman. Okay. So how do you think that plays out? Like, do you think, like, they give each other tips, like how to treat you know, each other. It, it you depends get two because perspectives now. I saw two guys. There was, there was a guy at YTI. Um, you know, he went in there trying to get his little, try to cut everybody. And, you know, he brought out his little card. Hey, I'm a dock worker too. Look. And he showed, he flashed his ID. And the guy was cool. And um, it was Antonio, I think. Rest in peace. Remember Antonio? YTI. Mm -hmm. Big guy. Latino. Tall. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he told him, I don't care. He Every, yes, Emero, yeah. Oh, man, yeah, he was cool. Yeah, he was real cool. Um, 
He told him, I don't care. You're going to wait like everybody else. Nah, but I'm a dog worker too. And I was like, nah, dude, get back in line. So it's that sometimes. That would rub off a little wrong. Yes. You know? So he did He he did send him to the back of the line. This guy thinks because he's right here, he's not a dog worker right now. Right now he's a truck driver. He's like, everybody, like you and like everybody else here. Nah, dude, go to the back of the line. Uh, the other guy. Um, he There's was, definitely one guy that once he got in, he would have been one of the assholes. Probably the way he was already using his card before he's even like fully established in there. Uh, you know, I don't you know. know. I think like that guy pull was the ropes to his advantage. I think yeah. he was super, super new. I think he was super new. So I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I couldn't really gauge him. I only had that uh, that you know mm-hmm. interaction with him that one time. I haven't seen him again. But mm-hmm. I was just like, well. maybe just a misunderstanding. Huh? We all make mistakes at first. Nah, I think it worked somewhere else, and he tried to do it here, and, okay. it, and it didn't. It didn't fly this time. So okay, maybe it's okay. learning experience for him. I don't know. But the other guy, the other guy, um, he worked whenever he could. He would go check in, and sometimes he would work, you know, double shifts, triple shifts. Like, it's just. Psh. And uh, I see him once in a while at Yang Ming. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Chilling. And, you know, there's no chassis. He's like, hey, you know, hook me up. Like, All right. And he'll, he'll, he'll give me a chassis sometimes. Or, you know, whatever. Hey, what's up? What you need? Or, you know, really cool. Really, really cool. You know, last time he was spotting, he goes, hey, where you, what spot are you going to? And I go, right here. All right, come come through. Or he'll text me, all right, Kyle, you know? It's, yeah. it's pretty cool. What about a household where, like, one is a longshoreman and one is a, a trucker? Mm-hmm. You think they end up arguing, like, hey, well, you need to stop doing that. And we're like, you know what? No, you I guys need to stop doing this. I don't think so because it, it depends if they're, like, longshoremen, they... It's a lot of politics involved, dude. Like at the ports, like just like drivers and stuff. It's like, like you as a trucker, like you know, from your company. This guy's a, you know, true troll. Like, why are you trying to get in? Why are you trying to get in to that spot if everybody's going here? Like, you don't speak for them. So, like, hey, why do you guys do this? That's not me. Like, hey, why do you guys throw piss bottles everywhere? Oh, I don't throw piss bottles. Some guys do, right? Like, Some guys do. Yeah. Okay. So then it's like telling them, like, oh, hey, why are you guys? Do this a certain way. Why don't you guys do it like this? Well, that's not me. That's the way they do it. So it's not. They're two separate entities, and there's two different people in the thing. You understand what I'm saying? It's hard. They're just the ones we see, but we don't know what goes on behind that. Well, remember everything. They want done a certain way. Like, do you think um, the longshoremen want to have that second pedestal at TTI, or they want to have that pedestal at Yangming? They don't want to do that. It's extra work. Why you want to do that? You know what I mean? It's the way the company wants it done. Like, total terminals as a as a company. That's how they want it done. Because that's their property, right? They show up to work. Like yes. They own all the equipment. Like Just The like, terminal owns everything in there. Yes. And, and, and these guys come in and provide the labor. Yes. Yes. So they're not in control of the labor either. They can't say, hey, I'm shorthanded. I need this. And I go, no, dude. Like, they, they have um, forecasts. Oh, I think I'm going to have this many truckers here this day. Yeah. So, well, you know, I'm going to order, you know, four top handlers and six trends. And they overbook appointments or for some reason or something. Yeah. And you get really long lines. It's only one guy, right, servicing that row. And there's another guy on the other side just chilling. And they can't they can't make their own thing like, hey, hey I'm going to go help this guy. I'm going to go move the trends over here. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. They have to be told to move the trans because they're an employee. So that's why you see sometimes long lines. It's not them. They have to get approval from the management and stuff. It's it's a lot. It's a lot of the that that us as truckers don't understand what's going on. Like look at the chassis, right? The mechanics. Hey, there's a bunch of chassis here, but they're not approving them to get fixed. Yeah, I heard that one already. Yeah. So. But it Who's just looks the, bad that they're there stacked. Yeah, so for as a truck driver, like, hey, those chassis, they're all right there. They're not fixing them. Look at these guys are lazy. It's not the point. That's not them. They want to fix them. They tell you, hey, this is what's wrong with it. This is what this is. And the companies are like, oh, that's a little bit too much. I'm going to go get it fixed, you know, off dock or whatever, you know. So we're like the stepchildren, basically, between the companies, the longshoremen. The drivers are stuck in the middle because – you know, hey, you know, come get these containers. They're available. Well, you know, here's three people to move, you know, 100 containers. Figure it out. Hey, but I need more help. Oh, well, this is what the forecast is. And mm. We're just stuck in the middle. We're in the back, like, saying, hey, service me, service me. And it's not my fault, dude. I don't have enough help. 
Yeah, I hear a lot of back and forth with truckers and longshoremen, but it's never really any heat on the terminals. Like, and it's not like to get throw heat at them. Like, I want drama. Like, I just think of this like a investigation, like a friendly one. Like, we just want to know because hmm. a lot of miscommunication is through having the wrong uh, um, point of Mindset, view on yeah. it. So you're like, if in your mind you're assuming they're lazy, so now you build off of that, and it's just not gonna work. Long no, term. Well, like, look at like say okay. Because you you don't think I think they get tired of like the people that don't know how it really works. That well, they get lazy. defensive. They yeah, get so defensive. Like, oh, you think I'm lazy? Well, fuck you then. Like, yeah. okay, I'm lazy. Yeah. Cool. But well, I don't think it's much of that. I just think that they get tired too, dude. Like, I mean, you're getting work x amount of hours, and you're you're getting you know used up a lot, dude. And you get frustrated. Then this guy comes in yelling at you like, hey, what the what? Who are you? You know, like yeah. you're nobody. You don't know what's going on. So there's already like like a hostile environment, and then you go in there, you make it worse, then you just make it worse for yourself. I think if you get off yelling, you know, talking smack to the all the people, like you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Because what happens? The machine skips you, and then you get more irate, and there's nothing to come about. You know what I mean? Just gotta mellow out, chillax. You know, they're people too. They're doing a job just like you are. Yeah, when I was younger, the the stupid one of the stupidest stunts I did was at at Maersk. <laughs> one of them, one of them, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm a, you know, like I'm 35 now, so I feel I'm matured somewhat. Uh -huh. Like I will, I, I would not do that today, you mm -hmm. know. But something about feeling like an injustice uh, purposely geared towards you, it, it kind of like made me blow up, right? But it was stupid. Basically, I did that thing where if the spot's open, I go in because mm -hmm. I fit. No yeah. one else was in there, you know. And if they honked, a lot of people do that. Like, they wait for you to go, uh -huh. and they see that you fit. Now they go like, oh, by the way, that's my spot. And it's like you were the guinea pig to know that they fit. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had the boss to go scope it out and lose their spot. But, you know, trucks are different. There's so, so many different trucks there. I mean, mm -hmm. your truck might fit, but the, another truck might not fit. Like, I'll your truck would have... <laughs> I'll move my fifth wheel all the way up. I'll slide the chassis in and then leave it, the pins unlocked so that when my can comes, I just pull up and hit the brake. Yeah. And it'll extend as I go. So yeah. Being like a pro. And you got them... Oh, you can yeah. feel it, you well, know? You know, like but, I said, like, your truck wouldn't fit where my truck fits. Mm -hmm. Because my truck's a little bit longer, a foot mm -hmm. longer. Mm -hmm. So, you fit, and I don't fit, but I can't get mad because you fit. Yeah, but some people get mad. So, I, well, come fit. Oh, yeah. I can't get in there. Okay, well, that's your fault. No, if I can't eat, you can't eat either. Yeah, that's that mentality. But but back to that story, it was like, I did that. Uh, one of the guys honked, but he had a 40. He wouldn't have fit there. Yeah. But anyways, so he kept honking, and that got the attention of, of the of the trans operator. So I think he made a note of it, and every time he would come to me, he would just keep going and skip. He did that like three or four times. And I, then it was almost lunch break. Mm-hmm. So me desesperé, and, and my stupid ass, I got off, and I and I laid down across the tracks. That was the one where we're at night at Mersk and they didn't service you. Yeah. Then the guy's like, fuck this. He just turned off the machine and left yeah. early. And yeah. he's like, he and didn't the even argue with me. He just left. He yeah. Just left. Like, but but I mean, who loses there? I lost. Yeah. He got off. He went home. And I had chilling. that whole time to, to think about it, like the stupid shit I did. Yeah, because you then, got there like at seven. We we're doing uh, we we're doing cross docks. And I was doing hazmat. Mines were on wheels, and you know doing my doing my thing, locking my pins. No corruption going on there. <laughs> <laughs> but locking my pins in front of you, just, ah! and then, then you know it doesn't yeah, help that yeah, sure. that your brother went over there and says, hey, you know my cans in the bottom, and you know my cans on top. You know if I get in front of you, you know we can get service faster. And you're like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here. You don't know what I've been through today. You know? <laughs> oh, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the way they do their shifts, you know, the mm -hmm. the trans guys work less hours, but they, they get allegedly. paid the, allegedly. Yeah. No, no, for safety reasons. Th this no, is, I know, but you know, what, you know yeah. what goes on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. So so when he came back, he, he, that guy didn't come back, but the, the dock signal came back. Mm -hmm. He was like, bro, that was wrong what you did. Like, you, no load is worth your life, bro. Like, you need to chill. But and they don't that's understand. all he said. He wasn't mad. He was just yeah. like, bro, like that that was wrong. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, you're right. I let my, you know, anger get the best of me. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Imagine I get imagine they 
didn't really see me and I, I well, you know. Well, the, the merch ones have the cameras. You, you uh, see the cameras right there in the front with the, by the tire. Yeah, yeah, okay, kinda... yeah, yeah, you're right. So you it's know so you stupid. It. Yeah, it was. But it's done. And, and and with time, I learned, like, next thing you know, I'm over here saying, like, how you doing? And genuinely, like, no, giving but a you shit understand. about how they're doing. Like, no, start a conversation. But and, you understand you know. that it's it's out of your control. And, I mean, I think if you would have fit, you would have fit fine. It's fine. It's just those, it was one of those days when merch was really bad. You know, the line was really long. It took a long time to get in. And once you got in, you were like, ah. Oh, and then, you know, I'm passing by and locking my containers. <laughs> You know, help feel the fire. Me. Yes, oh, so it all it all adds up, and it's just a learning lesson. You know what I mean? Yep. Good times. Do you know about um anything about this? Um, this one's random as well, but raffle. This raffle thing that you hear, like, is that coming around again, or how does that work? Because you know the what? general public has access to. I possibly. I got in a raffle. Uh, how many years ago? Five years ago. Yeah. We're at the speaker. Yeah. And one of my uh, friends that I know, one of the clerks, uh, she told me, and I go, "Hey, man, did you do your raffle? Did you put in your postcard?" And I was like, "What's that? Or what? What's going on?" He goes, "Oh, they're hiring." It, you know, the longshoreman community. Uh, most of them are from Long Beach and Pedro. Yeah. It's, you know, kind of like family-based, sort of. Wilmas. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. yeah. So they, they're they the first ones to hear about it, but they do their the the hiring. They, they post it on the Long Beach Telegram thing. They send out a little ad, small print. I didn't know about it. She told me, hey, fill out your postcard today. It's your last day before 430. And, you know, me, Ivan, you know, Beto. I think you put your postcard in, too. I think so. Yeah, we went to the postcard, and they were all sold out. And, you know, you put your name on there. You just submit it. It's a lottery, dude. You get picked. You're you're basically sold out. A casual, huh? Or what What do you sign up for? It was that one. I think that one was security. Oh, okay. I think that one was security. The other one they did again, it was the long term and the casual. Are they all like that or or is that like a one-off? Like, I've been. I've, is there like another hiring structure where they get onboarded? You know what I mean? Like, I heard the mechanics have something different. Oh, okay. But I don't know. I mean, I'm not a mechanic. I don't yeah. know. But, you know, you hear stuff, rumors and stuff. You can just go somewhere and, you know what, I'm interested in being a longshoreman. Where can I apply? Like, if it's it not were, like that. If huh? it was that easy, I think half of these charge drivers would be longshoremen. Yeah. Okay, okay. No, but, you know, you do, it's it's a lottery. But usually, it's, you know, this other time that they did, you know, half of the cards went to people that were working there. And they went in and half of them were for the public. But a lot of people didn't know. But then they put it on the news. And then there was a flood of people. But some people don't make it. Some people don't. Pass drug tests. They don't pass um, requirements, and they're still going through that list. But the the oh, okay okay. So just because they pick them doesn't mean they were a good candidate. No, remember you used to have to pass their um, their requirements and yeah. stuff. Drug test. Okay. Um, and then some people get down here. They don't like it. You know, some people don't like lashing. I heard lashing is really hard. Yeah, that's and when you secure the on the ship, right? Yeah, the, the those X, bars. Yeah. yeah like, and if I heard, <laughs> I heard some guy, dude, that, you know, he was that, that one guy, the truck driver, he goes, damn, dude, sometimes, you know, we, we go to a port and then you get these girls that come in and, you know, I'm not saying they can't do their job. Some girls are badass, dude. They do, they do the, everything. They don't care. Yeah. But some of them, they're like, oh, I don't know how to do that. And then they would just leave them there. And they were just, just boss. They said, no, dude, if you don't know how to do the job, go back to the hall. Like everybody else, they treat everybody equally. And, um, oh, but it's not gonna. It's not a gender thing. It's just no. a knowledge thing. It's it's not a knowledge, dude. It's hard work. Those bars are heavy. They're long, dude. And um, I just think that some people just don't like it. They just don't like it. They think they want it, and when they get it, it's not really what they thought. I don't know what they think. I think they just they don't know. Like, well, well, it's a job pays well. Let's go. Let's go try it, and then they see it's. You it's know. actual labor, like, you know? Yeah. Some yeah. of it, some of it's yeah. really, really hard, and yeah. some of it's, you know, fairly easy. We see the easy stuff, clerks, mm -hmm. you know, um, stock a loft or whatever, but all that stuff is dangerous. Dude. You got big old industrial machines, and, you know, it's 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 crazy. What's dock a loft? Because I think on the last podcast, I mentioned a uh, dock signal. Yeah, dock signal. Yeah, yeah dock signal. Because I, but I thought it was different. If you say dock, dock, a, loft, dock a loft, I think it's the one right else. there by the port. That, you know, by the side of the ship, and they have to do the the same thing. Oh, okay. you know, you're on the side of the ship, and there's a guy, yeah. you know, guiding the other guy for the bomb cart and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Oh, it's the same thing, but different area. Yeah. Okay, okay. The, the job is dangerous. So no I matter wasn't what. too far off then. No. Dock signal, dock, yeah, dock signal, yeah. yeah. But no, it, it's all dangerous, dude, because look how big those tires are. They're as big as you. You know what I mean? And then you have the top panners going around. You have to be very aware. It's a very dangerous job. That's why longshoremen get paid so much. It's dangerous. Yeah, you could get, you could get, literally get killed. Yeah. And, and, you know, and something happened recently, but I'm not going to mention. Yeah. I, I don't even know the name, but out of respect, you yeah, know? No. But it's unfortunate that to die that way. And that's why they push this safety stuff so much. And a lot of times we, we get comfortable, like, I'm good at this. You know, like, all it takes is like, one, one distraction and mm -hmm. that you're dead. You That's know? why they don't want you cutting through container roads and stuff like that because, I mean, you've you've been there. Do you see how people drive in there sometimes? Some of the even some of the people they, that work there blow through stop signs. Les gana el hambre, what? <sighs> yeah. well, as far as drivers, sometimes if you're in such a rush, you, you do unsafe shit. To Everybody, get to your spot. Well, of course, you know. I've taken the chassis and it's the feet are still dragging. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, There's a guy. Just enough. There to is get a there. guy, dude, that would take hazmats with no lights, the feet drag. Back in the day before Roto, yeah, you know, <laughs> sparks and stuff just <laughs> flying. They're like, damn. And then you know he passes you right by, and then you're about to get to Santa Fe, and it's for coming down with a load again. Yeah, like, but that's what the manifest was like that. Like, yeah, pages and pages. Yeah, he was. Hard work. We're making Hawuka. six, eight thousand a week sometimes. How Wooka? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. But I mean, I just think you just gotta be careful. You just gotta be aware of your surroundings and stuff, and you just gotta be safe. Like that's why people they don't want you to get off your truck because there's all these machineries. I mean, you don't want to get run over and be like, oh, why didn't see it? And that's why they they stress the vest so much and stay inside your truck and. Because you don't know where these machines are going. You're not on the radio. You don't know what's going on. You don't know the machine's going backwards or forwards. You hear the machine going, but, you know, you assume it's going up and it may be coming down. You don't know. I also hear it's like uh, it could work against you. Like if, if something happens to you outside the truck and you're not wearing your vest, that could impact the way uh, a lawsuit goes. Yes. If you're not wearing the proper PPE. Even steel toe boots you're supposed to have. And yes. a lot of us don't. We got well, our flip flops. We got our, no, our well, tennis shoes. Drivers, no. Drivers are not required to wear steel, show, uh, steel toe boots. The I dock see, workers are. I see the signs when you go That's in. That's dock workers. Oh, okay. Dock workers need to have hard hats. Yeah. Like the, the signals, they have to have hard hats. Some people don't have hard hats. Yeah. But most of them do. Man, I'm a hard, hard hat. I don't need a hard hat, bro. <laughs> yeah. So you get that one bolt coming out. Bing! Those shits are heavy, man. Yeah. What do they call them? Oh, the you're talking about the twist locks. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, that that'll that'll mess you up, dude. I found one and I saw that that they cost like 125 bucks each one. I saw I, I saw online. I saw uh, somebody's holding a door with it. I forgot where. A what? It's like a doorstop. Oh okay. I seen it. And I go, ah, that's a lock. I always see. I I, I can't remember where I I'm saw it. I'm gonna bring mine then and put it there. Yeah, like a doorstop. Like you know, yeah. door open like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. That's my <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, hey, I'm proud of myself. Today I didn't say nice. When, when there was like nice. a moment of silence, nice. like it's like nice. <laughs> and you try to think of what to say next and shit. You can't think about it because then yeah. you'll do it. Now it's in your head. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yesterday's edit, I, I think, or the previous one, I added a bunch of echoes to nice. Like, nice, 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 nice. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Probably get a sound cringe as fuck. Like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> Look, trying oh, to no. be a Gringe. sound producer and shit. Sound like a DJ, you know? Like, uno, dos, 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 uno, dos, dos. Si, si. So, what is something you would tell 18 year old Caesar? Buy Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> How Buy much Bitcoin. was it around that time? I think back then it was maybe what? Like couple hundred dollars yeah yeah now it's like at what forty six thousand something like that I missed out man i mean you didn't know you didn't have smartphones like this you couldn't just go on you know do your research that app. easily no just go on this app and like oh, what's yeah. cryptocurrency let me just put a couple How hundred do you think on there. they invested back then in bitcoin computers you have to go to a you know you sat with computers some people didn't have computers back then you know everything was expensive hmm. so you know you just go Go trade or whatever, get a broker or whatever. So yeah, I want to invest in cryptocurrency. What's that? Oh, there's this new one, Doge, um, Bitcoin or whatever. Yeah, the the bite the what? Yeah, the the one guy bought a. The, how I heard about it was the story about the, the pizza guy. Yeah, bought the most expensive pizza. Yeah, Papa John's. 
<laughs> but at then it was like a ten dollars. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you hear this guy has millions invested and and he's on his last attempt to log in. So if, yeah. if you fuck up, I think it that's lost money or something. Mm-hmm. He has all these people trying to help him find it. You know, hack into his own shit. Or well, maybe it's not even his. Maybe it's somebody else's and he's trying to hack into it. You don't know. Well, that's then, but you could invest now, even though you can't. You, you can't go back. Uh, you know. Well, there's a. Well, I do. I have invest. I yeah. do invest. Yeah. Okay. But um, there's a football player. Like recently, he got paid in Bitcoin. He requested it. Yeah, he right? re- requested it in Bitcoin. I don't know if he made money or lost. I think he made money because it was like maybe at thirty something thousand. Now it's at forty six. So I think he made money on that investment. Maybe he's looking to hold it and then just. But it's it's a gamble. You don't know. Mm. You don't know. It can go up. It can go down. I mean, last year, this time, I think it was like at twenty something. Now it's at forty six. So it's 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 a volatile market. You think you'll still be trucking if you would have hit it big in Bitcoin or done something in this field, invested in in you know? Uh, who knows? Huh? That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe I become. I, I, it'd be easier to open up a company. I don't have to worry about you know overhead and stuff like that. I just pay somebody. Hey. Let me invest in you. You run this company or whatever, and then I just kind of sit back. Well, maybe that's when you find out if trucking is really a passion or it's just a source of income, you know? Because sometimes, like, having the money, like, to have the liberty to do whatever you want, you, you really notice what you really like. Well, me, like I said, it's, it's hard for me to be out here when I'm off. I don't like to be on this. I like to be at home with my kids. I don't. You, you never see me on the weekends out here. I'm over there. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. not. Like, a lot of these guys come. They work on their trucks and doing this. I kind of do it in between the week. When I can, if I'm off of work, I need something fixed and then I'll fix it. But I'm not there like, oh, you know, let me do this. Let me do that. I'm always, you know, like you balance kid. it. You find a way to balance it. huh? No, I think when I'm off, I'm with my kids because I'm so when I you're work off, a you lot. Make sure it counts. Yeah. OK, because my kids are small. Dude, my kids are growing up. I mean, I saw your kids when they didn't talk yet. You know, yeah, yeah. Matthew and Aaron. I think Aaron was I think Aaron was still crawling. Mm-hmm. Now, how old is he? Seven. Yeah. I remember I told you my kids were small. And they were asking, hey, dad, when are you coming home? And then I just that's made it a point. That's when you made that switch. Yeah, yeah, that's when I made the point. I like, well, you know what? No, I got to be home. And when they start asking and they start looking and, you know, I've been there ever since. You know what I mean? What do you do with them? You find you, you well, can really, you're really kids, good at playing with them? My kids what, play what, baseball. Your... I have them in teams and stuff. And okay. that's basically all my off time is baseball. It revolves around them. My daughter, you know, plays a little bit of soccer. And I just, you know, I play video games with them, too. You know, I play Call of Duty with them. Mm. And um, I just kind of bond with them. You know what I mean? I have them be spend time with my parents because, you know, they're still grandparents. And I think it's really important. You know, family is important. That's just what I think. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't want to, like, I'm seeing that now. Like, see, like, well, it, it's hard. Um, especially, like, when you have, like, you if people that have split up and have uh, the mm-hmm. kids that, that stayed with the baby mama and stuff like that, just that distance, there's that gap. And and it feels like, like I think I have a decent relationship with my daughter. It's just, it could be better, but, you it's, know, there's it's, always room for improvement. Like, But with technology, it feels like it's more like texting, but the key is communicate, I think. And I, think I, I you, try my best. You, you know? have to make an effort. Yeah. I mean, with your kids and stuff. I mean, with Lexi, I think, FaceTiming would be better, you know, face to face and stuff. And, you know, just make an effort because they're kids. They know you don't want them to build resentment. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my boys, you know, this morning, like I said, I got up at five. You know, I, I made time for them. I took them to practice. It's And it's Sunday, January yeah. 16, 2022. <laughs> and yeah, I know. And, you know, I take them to practice. I try to be there as much as I can. I try to be there for games. I was coaching, helping them coach a little bit. But, you know. You want to see them grow, so sometimes you know you gotta step away. But I'm still there. I want to be there. I I enjoy them seeing them succeed. I like it. I live for it. I love it. How did you determine what sport they like? Did you put them in there because you like the sport? Because a lot of parents do that. Like you know, like I never made it as a rapper, so I'm gonna make make my son pursue music. Like they want to live that dream through their kids. My oldest one. My oldest one loves it. Okay. He loves baseball. You know, he likes it and stuff. My my little one, he pushes back. Yeah. But once he gets on the field, it's a big smile and he's, you know, getting after it. So, I mean, I like it. I like it. And um, sometimes you just got to push them in the right direction. And, you know, I give them all the opportunities and all the tools they need to succeed. 
so you know a private coaching or whatever this and that and i just want them to get better i want them to be easier for them and in a way right now it's not really about what sport or what what uh, activity right it's more about like what they learn from that right well, like teamwork and all, gonna, all, the, all the values that come with it. All the time you spend with them, they're going to remember that, dude. You know what I mean? All the time you spent there, you know, throwing the ball with them and stuff like that. They'll remember that stuff. Why not? And, um, you know, my boys, they um, – we spend a lot of time on the diamond. My daughter's always there too. My daughter's right there. I'm, I, I might have her play softball. I don't know. I'm just trying – I'm still trying to get her in. It's just the whole softball thing because she sees the boys, how competitive it is and how everything is. She's like, oh, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone has out. something, right? Like, I, I wonder, like, if, if there's a, a point where we can see, like, like Aaron, he, he loves art. He mm -hmm. likes to draw. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that he's good at that. Mm -hmm. And Matthew's more like technology stuff, like gaming and, mm -hmm. you know, building those little. There's these projects you could order and mm -hmm. you build it. I don't know what it's called, but like architecture stuff and stuff. Yeah, like like, like Legos. Yeah, he likes stuff like that, like technology mostly. So I'm wondering, like, if there's something that gives you a clue, like let me. How do I say this? Like, if you know that your son would be a great architect, and you see that now, like, if there's something you can see, so that you set him to master it at a young age, so that no, he's well, you, you, you know to for a better chance to be successful. In well, that yeah, like. Like, my boys, they're, they're really good in school. Like I said, they, they wouldn't be playing. They wouldn't have the things they have. Like, they, my kids are gamers. They play a lot of, a lot of their games and stuff. But me and my wife um, emphasize education. Like, they have to have good grades. So my oldest one is an avid. It's like, you know, advanced, whatever, you know, like, like how would you call it? You're like, um, honors classes, I guess. My little one does, too. They, they do homework really fast. You know, before they touch the computer, they have to have all their homework done. They have to have straight A's. And then, you know, some of the teams that my kids are on, they, they, they wanted to see the report cards because if you don't have good grades, you can't play. So, you know, they have to show the report cards and stuff. And it it's, helps them keep them out of trouble, too. That's my big thing. You know, if you have too much time on your hands, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Hmm, let me go. Let's go kick it over here. Yeah, hey, idle hands here. lead to evil thoughts. Thing. Yeah. So my kids are always busy doing things. And I enjoy them, see, uh, them succeed. You know what I mean? I, I love it. I just... Every chance I can, I, you know, show my kids off, you know. What if your kids, like, decided to eventually, w would you like them to be a trucker eventually? If, if, if that's what they wanted? Or, like, what would you, you know? I tell them, like, why would you want to be like me and have to struggle? Like, you know, hustling, working all these hours. When well, you can get an education and be the guy to tell me what to do. You know, take actual real vacations, take like two weeks off. Like right now, it's hard for me to take time off because we're a small company. And I, I think it would hurt us if I took time off. So it, it, I take my days off as I can. You know what I mean? I kind of like, I kind of try to fit my, my vacation time in. Just because, you know, I wouldn't do that to him because he, he gets put in a, in, a, in a bind and stuff. And, you know, stuff gets pushed back. And I, don't, I just don't like it. Because I understand him, too, because he's a small business as well. Thank you for sharing that about your family, you know, and all that. I appreciate it. So, yeah. you know, sometimes a little personal and, you know. But m moving on, what, as we wrap this up, what is the, an exit strategy for, for you that you have? Like, where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? You know, it, it depends. Like, I, I'm doing investing on the side. Um, eventually, you know, once I get a little bit more leeway and to see where the company grows, then we'll see from there. But, I mean, we get more drivers, more work, and, you know, who knows? You know, I can dispatch. I can do a lot of things. You know, I don't have to necessarily drive a truck. But I enjoy it. You know, it gives me time and money to spend with my, my family and stuff. So, you know, eventually my wife will be good where she's at and then she'll take over and then i can kind of lay back and then i can start doing other ventures like putting a driver on a truck get another truck you know hopefully buy some apartments and you know it's kind of be somewhat stable and just kind of just relax a little bit i worked a lot i've been working since i was 18 and um i've been with my wife for a long time and um we just you know want to see each other succeed and stuff as a family and stuff 
do you think uh, as a friend is, is this a wrong question to ask a guest like do you feel you're well off for your retirement like how are you planning for retirement like, <laughs> you know what i mean like, me and my wife joke about it i tell her that she's that? my retirement <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's a plan you know where she's at they, they give her good benefits so what i said i was in it like hey you know once you, you're you're in then we you know we just put all your check towards that and you know build for the both of us and you know when that time comes then we just kind of you take care of me because i took care of you so so many years so you're not like on a specific plan like you know how some people invest in like they get their like what is that roth ira stuff uh -huh. 401ks and well i invest stuff. in in crypto currency okay, okay. so if that hits on the side well that's cool you know so that's still a gamble then so your retirement oh, yeah. is a gamble well, in a way, in a, in a way, yes, but I I don't think so because I'm I, I, talk to my wife a lot and I tell her like, hey man, like let's do it like this and what do you think and she's on board. Hopefully she doesn't change her mind when she's a breadwinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's kind of like not all the eggs in one basket. Like you focusing no. on the crypto and then and then but she'll I, do the 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 retirement side. But I don't think I'm mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just completely like retire and not do anything. Like my dad just retired, so he it's it's. He's already bored and stuff. A lot of people think retirement is like you just stop and it ends and you just live off your savings. That's not what it is to you. What do you think retirement is? I think retirement, I, I, some people just, just can't retire. Like some people just like to work. Like some of the longshoremen you see, ah, and that guy should retire, but, you know, he likes what he does. Because people don't have a, a lot of exit strategies. Like you see, uh, I forget the nicknames, but a lot of the, the, the guys we worked with when when we used to work at the same Old company, timers. yeah, they look like respectfully, like they're going to like drop dead. They're going to drive till they drop dead. Like they don't have like a plan. Like they, they just put all work, 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 work. And it's like, well, that's some, some of the old time mentality, some of the old driver mentalities, but some of these guys opened up companies. Some of the smarter ones opened up companies and stuff, but they took a risk dude. And then, but they're paying dude. Like right now, like it's, it's tough Do these guys stay up all hours of the night. Um, it's a lot of responsibility. And not only that, people are counting on you and stuff. And it's it's not for everybody. Like, not everybody can just say, hey, I'm open up a company. I'm going to make money. And this is what it is. And if you don't know the... I think also, if, to be a good dispatcher, you need to be... At least know about the ports. Show up at the ports. See what happens. So, you know, hey, what's the difference? You go get a container. Come out. What's the whole... Yeah, what's, not expect miracles. And then... Yeah, like, you're like, what's the big deal? Go get a container. That's it. Like, you don't know the chassis shortages at ITS or TTI or Maersk or whatever. You don't know what's going on. You don't know. Some of the guys go in there and they'll sit in the chassis pit all day, bro, look, waiting for a chassis. But, you know, me and you are different. <laughs> me and you are over here at the empty pile. What's yeah, up, bro? Some, hey, shh. Don't give out the details. You know, secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people don't know, you know, little things here and there. Like, it's it's different. Like, it's I think to be a good driver, you have to learn how to be a good driver. I think you just automatically like, hey, I'm good, and that's it. No, I think you need to know your little tricks here and there. And not everybody is willing to help you, dude. Like some people, like when I see somebody brand new, dude, I help out because that was me at one point. You locked your pin, your pins in front of them. <laughs> This is how you lock pins, bro. This is how you know who King Kong is. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have any any tips to get along with us and Longshoremen? I think be civil, dude. You just know that they're there doing the job as well. Like you don't have to be so hostile. Why so hostile? You don't have to be hostile. Like some of these guys are they they go in there and their work. You don't know what's going on at home, and some people have a bad day, and you go in there. They what the fuck are you looking at? Oh man, what? Look at this guy, you know, and at the end of the day, they they kind of dictate what kind of day you're going to have. Like, if you're cool with somebody, like, oh, let me hook up my buddy real quick before I go to lunch. Or let me go hook my, my homie up right now because I know it's a long line. Or let me, you know, these guys are just people just like us, I think. And some guys are just cool, dude. Like, I, I, I kind of get along with everybody. And... I think everybody should just be more relaxed, more mellow. Just kind of calm down. Like you don't have to be so aggressive. Why are you so hostile? I know some people, you know, get in a fight with their wives and stuff, or with somebody else, with other drivers, and then uh, they get all bent out of shape, dude. It messes up their whole day, and then everything goes to you know. Yeah, they let that little that that short experience dictate the rest of the day. See, but me, see me when somebody being an asshole with me, you know the kind of kind of person I am. You know, I start fucking with them. <laughs> I mean, I had a guy at ITS on Friday, dude. He yeah. was just, 
you know, he cut me off like bad. You're like, all right. So okay, I kept, okay. you know. You want to play? You want to <laughs> play So we're game. at the chassis pit. He didn't make eye contact. And I was looking at him. And then, you know, as he passes by, boom. And he flips me off. Like, all right. What? So he, yeah, he goes to the trouble window. And I'm coming out with my chassis. And I see him. And I just kind of like stare at him. And I wave at him. And he's, ah, he gets all <laughs> irate. And that makes my day, dude. Yeah. Like, you want to be a dick? I'm, I'm cool, dude, you know? How's he going at the trouble with the bro? Uh, you know, and I thought about it, too. I, I got my, my stuff, and I was like, I'm going to go look for this guy and lock my pins in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> That's your signature move, bro. Yeah, and I was going to go, and I was like, I don't got time. I got I got too much things to do. I was just like, ah. If it was right here in the front, then yeah, I'd do it. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't want to go look for him and just go lock my pins in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to add? No, I didn't. I no. mean, I, I think everything was cool. Any, any Lambridge stories for you? Um... Not that I can think of at the moment. Maybe on another occasion with more detail. Oh, I will I will say one. Uh, well, it's not. Well, it's Lambridge because it ends up at the rail, right? Yeah. So this story, um, it's really short. It's being in a rush, you know. This time I almost died because you you park the, when there's no slots in, like, what is it? Uh, D, A, yeah. all that. Yeah. Then you would park them next to them, like uh-huh. parallel. Well, you, we weren't supposed to, but we yeah. did it anyways. Next to the, the train tracks yeah. and all that. So I was in a rush. And since I know I'm doing wrong, I want to hurry. I want to yeah. hurry and hook. Because yeah. if they don't see me, I'm good. Yeah, but of course. But if they catch me, then they might bring it up, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm in a rush. I, I get on the catwalk. Mm-hmm. I unhook. And I had this bad habit at, that once I unhook, I like I like jump off. Like if I'm gonna, I was there. Yeah. I was getting a chassis. Yeah. I was getting a chassis on the rail when we we're supposed like, to do. Oh. And then the truck passed right by you. Yeah, the I UTR. was right there. Boom! I was right there. Remember, I was getting a chassis off the rail, and then you jumped and you're like, whoa! And the shit went. Yeah, like, bro, I almost died. <laughs> and I'm like, shit, I'm gonna get in my chassis, bro. <laughs> cool story, bro. That was a good one. That was a good one. Santa Fe, yeah. Santa Fe days. Hey, all that stuff, it's it was good times. I, I enjoyed working at Fargo. Ah, I can't say the name again. Damn it. <laughs> I enjoyed working there. It's public information, bro. Just yeah. No, I enjoyed working there. Not, not because of the company, dude, but all the people we met. You know, we're our own little clique. You know, we would go eat. Mm-hmm. And um, it was it was good times, dude. Like, we made a lot of friendships there. And um, it was cool. Like, we met, you know, some of the, the clerks I met through um, – through, I met him through there because we were doing Lambridge there. And, yeah. you know, sometimes closed areas, you go to the trouble window and, you know, has messed up taking the paperwork before. And with all this COVID thing, everything changed. You don't go in the trouble window as much anymore. You just one driver, two drivers per time. They don't take the physical copies anymore. We used to turn in the paperwork to them. Oh, no. Not anymore. Everything's done through emails. And, um, yeah, no, but like I said, I, I made a lot of friends there at, at, at uh, at that company, and um, I basically learned how to work through there with the night guys. Those guys, man, either you keep up or you, you know, you drown. And you just had to keep up. And you know, the guys who come in and they said, Hey, where are the containers at? They're all gone. What all these night guys took them? Ah, oh, you know, corruption. But these guys, no, they, they, not, what I learned from them is that. That's when I knew that you have to adapt to the work. You can't make the work adapt to you. Yes. You you want to have this nice like yes. nine to five. Well. Yeah, like the, they if were the loads getting, aren't available during the nine to five. Then don't get mad. Like, yeah, these guys were getting upset that the night guys were finishing all the all the work, but they hey, wouldn't dude, make the sacrifice. Yeah, all these night guys stayed, and they moved all the work because everything became available at night, and you know, people, and the company's not gonna wait for like. Not only that, dude, I mean, if you know work is really slow and they tell you, hey, the ship's coming in at night, these guys expected, these guys, like, hey, don't touch them. They're for the day, guys. And, like, no, dude, the work's available. You don't know when the next ship's going to come in. You don't know how many containers are going to become available tomorrow. So you do as much as you can that night. Come back the next night and maybe you didn't get nothing. Or maybe the more containers became available. That was the time it was really slow. And sometimes we will make our week by Wednesday and not have to work the rest of the week. That was me. That was me. I worked mm-hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. A little bit of Thursday. I didn't like to work Fridays. Mm-hmm. Fridays were... Uh, I still don't like working Fridays, but I have to. You would fuck around and be like, it's Friday, bro. I'm like, yeah. it's Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, it's Friday, it's Friday bro. Friday for me. Friday for me. I'm done after this. But, bro, I got eight loads barely. Oh. <laughs> to. Sucks to be you. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, uh, Mr... 
oh, and when I thought that three grand was a lot, uh-huh. Ivan would say, oh, shit, it's Mr. 3,000. Mr. 3,000. Mr. 3,000. Yeah. $3,000 checks. Thought I was doing too much. No, and you saw some of the guys at the night, fucking oh. seven, eight grand, like, oh, corruption. Way, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing we thought because that's what the old guys told us. Oh, son los condineros, condineros, you know? And pinche vato cundinero. Cundinero, guys, not condineros. Nah, cundi, la cundina. Cundineros. La cundina. Mm-hmm. I know there was, there was a lot of stuff of that still going on. What's cundina on. in English? Um, <sighs> a bribe? No, Kundina, I think it, Kundina is different. Kundina's, like a quote, like you pay the dispatcher, no. like the, yeah, but, X amount. Yeah, but a Kundina is not that. You. Kundina is not that. It's, um, <sighs> Kundina, I don't think I have a word for Kundina in English. Mm. You know, you do the, you pick your numbers and you pay, everybody pays that, that, that day. Oh yeah. Okay. Ten, ten people, uh, the Kundina is everybody pay all a thousand dollars in ten weeks. Yeah, and the first week that guy gets a thousand. Yeah, the next the second guy. week the other guy. Yeah. but meanwhile it's kind of like a savings thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, so but then then we miss a miss miss a pro- what did he say? Misappropriate. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah, that's not that's not the correct word for what well, was they, going you know, on. Well, they slang. I guess it's yeah. slang for them. Eh, son bastante la Kundina. Yeah. dispatchador or whatever it is. It's a lot of confusion. I think. Uh, the owner wanted it that way. They so how much separation. would you pay, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, bro. You didn't have to. Why are you going to pay somebody to do their work? They're already getting paid for it. You're like, I'm just charismatic, bro. Nah, see, what's funny is what I would I would tell the owner. I'm like, well, damn, dude, they're making money off of you. What do you mean? He goes, yeah, they're getting the drivers are paying him, and then you're paying him. He's kind of like robbing you. And then he would be like, huh. And then, you know, you plant that seed. Yeah. <laughs> And then this guy's like, oh, I don't want to be robbed. Why is this guy robbing me? What's going on? Yeah. I'm going to pay him less. And then he'll be like, why am I paying less? No, this is BS. And then, you know, you start all that. Like, Because ah. you're an independent contractor, bro. You, you you collect other dispatch fees on the side. Well, remember that one time that we would just work enough just to pay the truck. And we were getting checks, what, $12? <laughs> yeah. I have it. I got to look for one. It's like... Um, 12 cents? No, like... Two dollars and some change. Two seventy five. I'm gonna frame it and put it somewhere. Yeah, but you know, we we were doing our own thing on the side. Yeah, yeah. of course, yeah, yeah, because yeah. they paid more, and yeah. you didn't want to be a part of that whole. Remember when we were doing empties from uh, from Santa Fe to Kong Global before they dispatch anything, and you left your empty outside. <laughs> oh yeah, the that reefer? guy was a dick. Oh, he's still there. Yeah, he... he's still there. Well. No, we made that big old line from Alameda, and then, you know, you didn't get anything until these reefers were done. And they were like, ah, but they're not work. Okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. You well, got the to guy, that. The guy came out with attitude, too, though, like, no, really, well, he really closed. aggressive. No, because he closed. He closed, uh, he closed Kong Global. Mm-hmm. So that's it for today, and you were there the whole day, and you're like, nah, I'm taking this empty no matter what, and just dropped it. Blink. <laughs> this is your empty now, homie. <laughs> I Who guess I got more empty? stories than I can remember, huh? There's another guy that flipped them off, and he got banned for yeah. life. Oh, I go. That's the, that's how you get banned for life. Yeah, <laughs> that's easy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. no, the guys. That guy was something else. Yeah, dropping an empty there on the ground. I think this even is, lower the landing gear. This is my yard, not <laughs> yours. And you dropped it on the street. Actually, it wasn't the Conglo. It was just a little street, Lomita. Come you get dropped your it empty, bro. Yeah. Don't fuck with truckers. Ah. There was that one. Don't fuck then... with a trucker that's hungry and trying to make some money for that week running low, you know? Oh, and then you got hit at F10 with the machine? Oh, yeah. And that was because I was asking. Um, you I was trying up... to fit in the row. Yeah. <laughs> well, you didn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> I fit here, bro. You're kind of sticking out a little bit. No, I'm not. No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Crunch. <laughs> I never replaced that bumper. I just, I just pushed it in. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hmm. With the first black truck you had before, the one that, the one you had got before me, mm-hmm. that one, um, a stack of containers fell in front of me. Remember? Mm. We were doing uh, Lambridge and it got stuck for the second shift, and then the guy was putting empties on the side of the of F10, and I guess he hit a container, and all the containers fell, and they just fell right in front of the truck, and I was like, damn. It was empties? Yeah, they, they used to park empties on the side of the fence, remember? Yeah. You know the empty pot F10? You would come yeah, around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you so pass the, uh, the reefers and come do yeah. a big giant U-turn. So I was in line outside. Kirk. I was in line outside. 
oh outside and then the okay. guy hit a stack and the stack fell out to yeah. the street like oh snap and they hit like the like the wire the barbed wire hit the side of the truck or whatever yeah, yeah and i was like hey man he hit the side of the truck but then he told me okay hold on i was doing lambridge bro i'll be back <laughs> mm-hmm. So I went, I came back, and I came back. Oh, hey, man, I was outside with the truck. Hey, why'd you leave? And I go, well, I'm doing ambush, bro. You guys aren't coming out. I'm busy. <laughs> oh, you can't do that. It's no big that. deal then, huh? Yeah. No, I, I never got nothing out of there. I just told him, You hey, jumped man. out of the truck and rolled on the floor and said, my <laughs> neck, my back? Nah. <laughs> it, it just, oh, I just went oh. around because I had a, you know, I was working. I was like, I didn't get hurt. I got to keep going. That mentality, like, hey, man, it was Monday or Tuesday. I got to go. This is the Lord telling me it's not my day to die. I got more <laughs> loads to move. I buy a lottery ticket. Shit. I don't know what happened to that guy. That guy was really like scared. Like, oh man, I'm glad I didn't kill nobody. But mm-hmm. it was a it was a whole stack. It was, it was like maybe like, three containers on the floor. Damn. And I, it really hit me because you know it it was like like this much away from the container, like from the truck. I was mm. like, oh wow. Oh. And the guys are going around me after everything happened. Like I'm not gonna stay here, bro. I gotta go. It's already open. Not not checking. How are you doing? The, the security guard asked me, they go, hey, how are you doing? I'm good. They didn't hit me, but just scratched my truck. It searched like a little bit on top. You didn't even notice. Because mm-hmm. you got it afterwards. <laughs> One time I got um, in that same empty row, I went and I got, uh, they were flipping an empty off of me. And I was in such a rush and it. Cause I, I I hate when I don't align properly. I hate being back and forth. So I try to I can always keep my eye on the mirror and then just yeah. as soon as it, you hear that beep, boom, on cue. But then for some reason this time I backed up. I had to back up a few times and then I just put it in high gear. You know, backed it up. So then he takes it off and I'm still mad. And so I go to take off. I go back, <laughs> and my sleeper hits the the empty the container. Yeah. Oh, shit. But it was just a little bit like. Like, there was no hole, mm-hmm. right? But it's enough to be like, oh, shit, mm-hmm. you know? But it's not enough to be like, stay here. We're going to call security, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, the guy's just like, the oh. fuck? <laughs> I Dummy? Just, I take off. You know? <laughs> Dummy? Yeah. Another incident where... Um, oh, I got a good one. I got a good one. So, we're, you know, we're doing Lambridge, you know, yeah. racing, me and Ivan. Mm-hmm. You know, racing to the chassis pit, grabbing a chassis or whatever. <laughs> I hook onto my chassis... And um, I'm on this side, and then Ivan's on this side. All of a sudden, an old man hooks up to the chassis next to him. All of a sudden, I see Ivan somewhere over there on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck happened? I was like, what there? happened? This motherfucker hit me with the chassis, and they moved, and I flew that way. <laughs> and Ivan was pissed. He yeah. goes up, and he's an old man. He's like, ah, oh, that guy could be my dad. Ah, uh, Cuidado, senor, and he could have killed me. <laughs> and I'm over here rolling. <laughs> no, he was rolling. Uh, he did. He yeah, he did. went flying, dude, flying. He was like, "Oh, this guy almost killed me." And I go, "Relax." <laughs> did you have your safety vest on, sir? <laughs> we, uh, you know how he puts it on. He just kind of throws it on. Yeah. Like, he was. It was at night, dude. That's when the chassis pit hey, was like that one. That vest uh, turned into a fucking cape. <laughs> you know, he turned into Super Ivan. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was mad, dude. He was, he went flying. I was like, Damn. whoa. Let me look at my load. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you all right, babe? Yeah, all right, cool. I'm up. <laughs> I took off. Yeah, he went flying, dude. It was it was nuts. Yeah, it was it was one of those like, what what are you doing back over here? And uh, yeah, whoa, bro, weren't you over there? Yeah, he Your was over there, bro. He was yeah. upset. He was upset. He went flying, dude, like flying. And the old man had a change of heart and said, "Young man, take well, the he, chest." He didn't see him. Oh. That's the that's the funny part. He didn't see him. Mm. He just got up all dusty, like, "Oh, qué pasó? ¿Qué está pasando? What are you talking about? Oh, it's <laughs> next to the chassis." Oh man, it's from when you hook up, huh? That little bump the chassis does, or what do you well, think? Well, I don't know what I don't know what happened because he hooked up to a chassis. I think that chassis had a flat, so I think he went to the next chassis over. I don't know what happened, dude. But I don't know. I don't know. He was over there on the floor, <laughs> and I was rolling. Like, what the <laughs> hell? Oh shit. Since we're on stories, I, I, I one more came to mind. There was um, at at BNSF, you when you would get flipped, they, sometimes you would get flipped. They would flip your load, and I forget the name. Five D. Five D. Yeah. So then you go drop the chassis at the pit. Mm-hmm. But this time there was someone at the pit that I didn't like at the moment, <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Another driver. So I'm like, okay. So I busted a dick move that re- resulted in instant karma. Cause I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to lower the landing gear for him, you know. I mm-hmm. wanted it to just collapse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was my, like, ah, I got you. Uh huh. So I just do that. 
I don't make eye contact. I just unhook, unhook the chassis, the, the quinta, the fifth wheel, mm-hmm. and I hop on the truck and I just take off. Next thing I, I hear, bah! airlines. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I got, you know, shot. Ah, like sniper. Shots. Yeah, <laughs> on the on the sleeper. Bah, bah. Like you know, uh-huh. it was just that the, the airline stretched so bad, and they, when they gave they out, yeah. bam. Man, I didn't even stop. I was going to give him that, you know. <laughs> that satisfaction? Yeah. Like, but he know but, you saw it. But, like, I, knew, but I knew what me. happened. I just kept going, motherfucker, motherfucker, motherfucker. <laughs> and, yeah, that was my karma. But no, we, I mean, we had a good time, dude, working there. I mean, it was stressful at times. But for the most part, we, we kind of just hung out because it was so, our own little crew. Yeah. But sometimes the, the friends, they, they, they like, um, who did this to me? Motherfucker locked my pins when they were taking my empty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I did that one. That wasn't me. <laughs> I'm about to end up on a t-shirt like that. that <laughs> we recently put a, chi, a chinito on a t-shirt. <laughs> oh, this yeah? I had cut the line, and, and, and I believe the guy locked his pins. Oh, dude, I got stories for so That guy got off, and he unlocked them, and he's like, fuck you. I have stories. That F10, dude, the line at F10 before when... I remember it used to get really bad. Remember they did the three lines? It used to be one line before. And they made two lines. And they did the three lines. You know, right there by the lunch truck. And I'm right here in line and stuff. And this guy just comes out of nowhere, dude. Just cuts two lines and goes to the right line. You know, the right line always moves faster. Mm-hmm. So then I'm in my truck. So I'm like, dang. I think it was behind me. It was behind me. And I was like, dang. You'll see the savages. When you see them crossing the tracks. You yeah, know. that's them. Oh, no, that, that's before. That's when the trip the trip days. Hey, make, make room, make room. I'm going, I'm going. Oh, I'm having truck problems. What's going on? And then mm-hmm. <laughs> we did that. We were, we were guilty of those. We had a couple of those before. No, but this guy, dude, they started fighting. Dude. Hey, get out of the line. Get out of the line. Nope, 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 nope. This guy, you know, pulls a machete. And this Man. guy swings. And the machete cut him like a little bit right here. And he goes, come on. And he opens the door. Come on. And he has a machete in his hand. And he sees his hand is like, like, like bleeding like a little bit. You know, poor police comes back. Hey, 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 this guy come here with a machete. And the poor police stopped him. I think that guy got arrested. Hmm. And I'm right here in line like, damn, that's crazy. Eating my burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner and a show. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was. it was. Could have been you getting your burrito chopped in half. Yeah. No, it wasn't me. I was in line already. That was cool. Yeah. They were behind me. Yeah. Oh, the good one, too. You know, it, it's good to know securities. Because remember, we used to cut the line at YTI. Yeah, and if it's the wrong one up there, you get that little no. go around. When our buddies used to work there. Oh, be like, yeah. hey, Kylie, go, 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 mm-hmm, go. Mm-hmm. That was good times, yeah. I know a couple of guys were like, hey, what the hell? And then I told them, hey, tú tienes palanca en la oficina con el despacho. Yo tengo palanca aquí en el centro de security. It worked both ways, dude. And then, yeah. you know. Some of these guys are still cool. Some of these guys are still driving. Most of the guys are still driving different companies and stuff. You know, this guy, um, he did me the bottle, though. He, he cut the line at YTI. You know, when you're getting, once you pass the stop sign, that's that's when pressure is on. If you're trying to let someone in. Yeah. The stop sign, the last stop sign is like, yeah. oh, shit. Mm-hmm. This dude literally held the line for like two minutes, bro, at that stop sign. And I, and I was coming by the Bomberos. Uh-huh. And I and I went around everyone, mm-hmm. and he hooked me up that day. But then we built that little, like, when I can return the favor, I, you know what I mean? But I try not – it's not something you do all the time, but every now and then it's okay to get hooked I, up. Me know? and Ivan, dude, like, Steve opened a lot of doors with us yeah. for the securities right there at YTI. Mm-hmm. And, um, but they're all people. Ever. That's why it is. It's, it's simple, but not so simple. We don't make it simple. You know, it was fun, dude. It was it was it was good times. Like I said, having all those all that work, it was just abundant work. You didn't have to worry about anything. It's just you were just mad that you didn't get a load from the rail. But there was a bunch of work. There was chassis coming down. There was everything it was abundant. Like there is now, but just now it was just appointments, appointments, yeah. uh, chassis right now. Everything's getting held up. Everything's you know in the yard somewhere. You know waiting to go. Back into the port and stuff. There's a lot of stuff that gets held hostage. A lot of money everywhere. That's true. Just gotta, you know, do your look for it. It's out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? No. Okay. 
What's all this graffiti on your table? Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to do a little autograph session right now. As a, I need to pick a spot where you know, you're like, going to see it and you're like, fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was here. You're like, ah, oh, this guy. I know you're going to write Afro. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> a good one. Everybody asks me, like, oh, you know, sometimes I'll put in the comments, you know, yeah. Afro. And yeah. you're like, ah, it's my little bit of, ah. You still confiscated that sticker. I want it back. The one. Um, it's getting kind of faded already. Yeah. the You know which one? Like The, the stay away. Get, yeah. The too one. close to my truck. Yeah. Fun? Yeah. And then the fine print. Yeah. If you're reading this, you're nosy or what is yeah, it? Yeah. You're a nosy mother effort. It's just yeah. funny. But. Hey, dude, we tricked the truck in. Everything was there. It was up for grabs. Yeah. I said, let me take this right quick. A Let's get a guys bro. A lot, uh, dude, some guy, I was fucking sleeping in the truck at the yard and this guy. Uh, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I woke up. Wish your wife. This was up. I woke up. I see this bald motherfucker right there. <laughs> Taking off my he, wiper blades. He, he's like, uh, ¿Qué o vale copa? Or, ¿Qué, qué, yeah. qué, qué onda? No, quería saber. Like, you try to play yeah. off, you know? Yeah. Were you about to take my windshield wipers, bro? <laughs> yeah. Nah, this nah, guy's nah, nah, making nah, over nah, 100 grand and just, you know? Quería ver que, you know? Yeah, dude. It's that crazy. That just like about to... Mm, I still see I had, that guy. Because I had the nice ones. You know, I, I had bought the... The ones that auto zone those anko esa madre it's funny dude because it, these guys make all this money dude but they don't want to like i've heard of guys not changing their oil i did that for a while like yeah i think I'm my Cummings buddy not, bro. whoever had that before would not do the maintenance nah, nah, either bro. i did the maintenance i did the maintenance on that one no you get confused oh remember, not that yeah, one the other the, one the, the second yeah, one the second black one yeah uh he didn't drive that much so i don't mm -hmm. think uh i think he's all right I don't blame Ivan for my in frame. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't changing oil, bro. You were guzzling oil when you were going to Vegas. I go, hey, is a gallon uh, a trip too much? <laughs> <laughs> Just top it off. That that I, I figured that was doing his own oil change with time. You know, <laughs> I'm leaking a gallon. You know, I'll put a gallon. <laughs> and then they were doing. I think the EGR crew went at the same time. I I never had to change it. I don't know. It just went away. My I changed my EGR quarter. I was blowing these. Do you see these big uh, clouds coming out? Or Pink ones. Yeah. And uh, they were going away. to Santa Maria. Remember, we we're doing yeah. all that but train. It just went away. Not mine. On that one, it was a sensor issue. I just I was stranded out there for a couple hours, and I uh, got the part at a Kenworth in that area. Oh, you guys went a separate time. Yeah, when my um, what is it? The turbo exhaust or turbo actuator? Esta madre. In that area, like I couldn't go up the hill. It was going like five miles per hour until I got to the destination, and then I ordered the part. It was this little sensor. I think they call it a map sensor. Yeah. It goes on top of the manifold yeah. area. Just that manifold shit, Manifold absolute bro. pressure. Or like yeah. That. No. We, yeah, a lot of stuff, man. A we, ton did, of stories. Uh, we did the, that one uh, Firestone uh, brewery. Oh, yeah. I love that one. Uh, that drive, and then we hit that restaurant. Yeah, and then stay there, get fucking faded, and... You know, Not me though, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah, we didn't get, nice. get fitted that. that I, I got a one. buzz. I got a nice little buzz. It was a nice restaurant. It's a nice setup, and you see like all the activity going around. Mm -hmm. I think they got like a little belt right going around. The little train. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. I don't know what took them for so long to unload kegs. Dude, they were on the floor, and there's like a thousand something kegs in yeah. the one container. I'm like, just roll those motherfuckers off, man. Pero bueno. That was good. Definitely a great session, and um, I'm thankful you came and, and, and you know, took time. Yeah. It's Sunday. You don't have to do this, and I, I appreciate you, yeah. you know. It takes – it's not my podcast. It's, like, your guys' well, podcast because without the guest, there's no podcast. So I want to thank you. Broken record. <laughs> I want to thank you. I want to nice. Nice, <laughs> nice, 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 nice. But yeah, man. So thank you guys for listening and we'll see you on the next one.